Okay, it's 605 and I think you are all ready for this meeting, this neighborhood meeting to get started. If everyone could get to take their seats. Um, you no, know, we're going to free up some we're going to free up some chairs here. Give it just a minute here. We've got some extra chairs. We'll try to set them up in the room. As I mentioned, um, we do have an overflow room that's got a monitor set up. There's food, snacks in that room as well. We've tested it. We, we learned from the last town hall meeting um, how to fix all those AV glitches. So anybody, I can't have people standing in the back there. I'm going to ask that you go to the other room. You literally can see me straight from the other room uh, through the corridor. I cannot have people standing. And there and their chairs here. We're going to free up some chairs here too. So, okay, while you're you're getting settled, thank you for coming out, especially on such short notice for this neighborhood. What I'm calling is a Q and A. My name is Ara Moranian. I'm your city manager, and I'm here to speak to you very honestly and candidly about what is happening, especially the information that I've gleaned and ascertained over the last week. Before we get started in the for with this Q&A, I just want to go over some house rules. Some of you have never been to live Dara, Linda, for, and this may be your first time. Welcome to uh, your park facility. If you go out the doors right through this corridor here, there's a hallway that opens out to the outside. You can go, if you need to go to the restrooms, the restrooms are down the outdoor corridor. It's the women's restroom first, followed by the, the men's restroom. You know we have snacks set up over on, on the side table there. This is a, a casual, informal meeting. If you need to get up, get up. I'll try to have a break um, halfway through this Q&A so that you could stretch and whatnot. Um, before I get into the logistics, I. There are two things, two bits of information I think every one of you in this room needs to have. You need to get this magnet, and if you don't have it, you must um, get this information. It's the pvpready.gov. It's, it's about the evacuation uh, software platform that we have. Every neighborhood is divided into certain areas, and there's a there's a, a an actual category or, or category number for you, for each of your neighborhoods. You need to know your, your evacuation zone in case you get a message through the app that you need to evacuate. And this is not just for landslide purposes, but any emergency, whether there's a wildfire, whether there's an earthquake, whether there's an explosion, you need to know uh, this is very important. I don't think many are um, have their zones. Please get that information. The other thing is I, I I learned today, or not today, a couple of days ago, the city has many listservs. We disseminate information to the public on our listservs electronically. And we have we created a, a dedicated listserv for the landslide. And I found out this week that only 200 people are subscribing to this listserv. That was very disappointing. We are putting out information. We spend so much time as a city um, putting out community updates on everything that's happening and people are not getting that information. And maybe that's why you're in this room because you're not getting that information. There's, there's a handout on the table that has um, QR codes where you can subscribe, you can get the information. Please subscribe, subscribe to all the different um, uh, listservs that the city gives out that you're interested in. So you can always stay up to date on what is happening in your city. Lastly, as a house rule, um, I, I, the way we're going to answer this or conduct this meeting, we're not, it's not going to be a town hall. You're not going to get, you're not going to hear any presentations from any of the stakeholders or from me. 
We're going to go right into the program after some of the introductions into the Q&A. My hope is that your questions will yield the answers that you're looking for. We'll cover everything on my checklist. If not, at the end of the program, if something didn't get covered, I will I will make sure I cover. I've got a list of things I want to make sure gets gets covered here. The way we're we're taking questions. I want it to be a very informal uh, meeting, similar to what happened on Saturday, and I'll explain. So we're going to ask you just to raise your hand, and I'll probably see a ton of hands. You'll have plenty of time to get to your questions, so we'll take a few at a time. We'll ask you, we have a mic, we'll go around, we'll ask you those questions. For those that are participating virtually, we uh, you can put in a question in the chat box, and we... I. We're using technology here. They taught me how to work off a, of a live document where the questions will start to populate this spreadsheet. We will get, I, I will alternate between um, questions from the audience as well as questions from, um, from the virtual participants. So, so with that, what I'd like to do is introduce Mayor Krukshank to say some opening remarks. Thank you, Ari. Um, so thank you all for being here. Um, like Ara said, it's not a time for long speeches and that. I just wanted to introduce myself, John Kirkshank. I'm currently the mayor. If you didn't know, we have a city council of five members. One of my colleagues is council member Barbara Ferraro. She's here tonight. Um, because of the Brown Act rules, we can only have two council members in any meeting like this because it, it's not an actual public meeting. So um, that's why there's two of us here tonight. But of course, we're gonna be listening to your questions and of course the answers. Um, I was at the assembly members uh, town hall. Of course, that was the day after you all received that you were having your gas shut off in three days. And so of course, more than half that crowd were people from your community out asking questions. Like Ara said that we had an opportunity to start the process of answering questions. We actually had to break the meeting into two different meetings. Um, at that point, you know, we had not had this extra meeting with the utility companies that we had on Monday. Um, and so we learned a few more things as well, a lot more things actually. And you're gonna have questions about all these things. And we've asked our utility partners to be here to answer all these questions candidly, uh, because we know in Rancho Palos Verdes, we've got a lot of people that are smart. We've got a lot of problem solvers. Um, you know, I'm an engineer myself by profession, and I'm always one that says, hey, we can figure out ways to get around whatever the problem is. So, you know, I guess I would ask you all, first of all, thank you for being here tonight. It's important. And I know there's a lot of people that are here with us virtually. Uh, we have the press with us as well. But let's let's try to methodically ask as many questions as you need. Uh, but let's try to keep our patience level calm because, you know, you're going to hear some things tonight that maybe you don't know about. Instead of getting angry about it, let's just ask a follow-up question and make sure you heard what you heard, because we don't want people to jump to immediate conclusions. Like I said, our utility people, they don't know what your questions are going to be. They're going to do the best they can to answer your questions. They might not know everything either, because they have technical staffs they work with as well. So I guess with that, I just want to thank you all again for being here. Um, our city council cares. I just so you know, I, on Friday when I heard about the gas shut off, I told my wife and she almost was in tears. We don't even live in this area and the landslide area, but I want to let you know that we have 42,000 residents in our city and every one of the residents care about the people, all of you that are being affected. Um, and that's why our council cares because we represent all of you. So thank you for being here tonight. Let me um, introduce some of the stakeholders that are here this evening. Um, we've got we've got Southern California uh, Edison represented by Selena, and then we've got so so SoCal Gas here represented by by Ben. Many of you know their faces. We also they brought some of their colleagues and their engineers here to help with any of the questions. I appreciate Choa being here this evening. The various HOAs. I know the PBCA is here. I know the two. Um, landslide abatement districts are represented here this evening. We've got um, Chief Kane here, uh, as well as Rosemary, representing LA County Fire Department. Of course, Captain Guerrero and the entire, or it seems like your entire fleet is here. I told her, I said, yeah, I think you need to bring the SWAT team out. And and, and she said, yes. And I said, no, I'm just, just joking. Um, I, I, know, I know Rancho Palos Verdes. I know 
I know many of you, I stand in front of you and I look at so many faces that I've known and I've got to know over the last 26 years that I've worked in the city. I, um, when I started as, as a planner, one of the first things they told, taught me about was the Portuguese Bend landslide. And I, and, and I know in 2004, when we started to see some cracking in the Seaview neighborhood, I really got to learn uh, through the then director of the, the planning department, Joel Rojas, I got to really learn about the landslide. Never, ever did I imagine we would be experiencing what we're experiencing today. Um, the city has been working since 2017 on a landslide remediation project in the Portuguese Bend area. As you know, the landslide is comprised of five subslides and um, the center portion is Portuguese Bend. And at the time, that was the most active area of this greater landslide complex. And we had a project and we've been working on this project since 2017, when I became city manager in 2020, one of my highest priorities was to get um, everyone's attention on this project and support because I knew it was very important. I knew something imminent was happening um, because I was being told but I never imagined I would see the the, the fissures, the crevices, uh, Vanderlip Drive, the 40 foot deep uh, fissures, all the trails, 10 miles worth of trails closed, two beaches closed, and your homes. The When I drive, and I drive this community, many of you see me driving around, you know the car, you know when I'm out there, people come out and they talk to me. That means a lot to me because I know you know you can talk to me. And it's for that very reason I called this meeting Monday night. Last Wednesday, I received an email from LA County Fire Department and it's a public record. And it came from Chief Kane and he basically put the city on notice of public safety concerns that the fire department has observed in three areas. It had to do with access to your properties. The fire department uh, requires a six minute response to your properties. And there was a concern based on the conditions of the road that the six minutes would not be adhered to in some areas. In the Portuguese Bend community where the Narcissa Gate has now been closed, you have one way in and out. And I'm working with Chief Kane to see if we can get another access road uh, opened up for the community during this emergency and state of emergency that the council declared back in October. The second concern had to do with wildfire and, and the ability uh, uh, for the fire department, if something were to, uh, a fire were to break out in uh, the preserve, would, would they be able to have boots on the ground to get to the fire? And what I was told is, Probably not. They would have to create strike zones and wait till the fire burns to them in order to get to it because it's, it's hard to get to. And the third was the concern about some of the conditions of the structures out there, the structural integrity, even though that's not in, in um, the fire department, that's the building officials call, but there was a concern that they may not be able to get in and, and rescue someone in an emergent situation. That was very alarming to me. And I immediately put some plans in action only to find out Friday morning, SoCal Gas was out here with, um, on an emergent situation to look at the gas line um, over a, by Wayfarer's Chapel. I was at the mayor's breakfast that morning when I got a message and they, I, they said, you need to come out here. And I came out there, I, I met Claudia and Kent out there and Corinne came up to me and she said, Corinne Girard came up to me and she said, I, I'm going to ask the gas company to move uh, the gas line. And I said, I don't think you should ask that question. My gut is telling me something bigger is happening here and we need to be prepared. Prepared. I keep saying to myself, we need to be prepared. We said it in October when the council declared the state of emergency. We need to have a contingency plan. We've been saying that um, because we are in a state of emergency, we need to be prepared. Saturday, Assemblymember Mirasuchi 
had a town hall. The town hall was not for just the landslide. It was something he had scheduled two months earlier. It just happened to come on the day uh, that um, after SoCal Gas announced that it would be shutting off gas in 72 hours. So clearly we had a large presence. I was there. I told the assembly member, hand the mic to me. I can answer the questions. What happened that um, at that meeting, the questions, we ended up taking the conversation with about 50 to 60 residents into the fireside room. And we had a, we had a really good, honest, candid conversation. I, I know some of you were there. And I said at the very end, I said, this is what our community is all about. I'm going to, we're going to have, a, I'm calling for a meeting with um, staff and a lot of the stakeholders Monday. It's going to be a few hours long. I said, after that meeting, I'm going to call for a neighborhood meeting similar to what we held so I can tell you what I know. And that's why Monday's meeting, it was actually almost five hours long. Uh, SCE, all of our utilities were there. Uh, SoCal Gas was there. We had all the communication facilities there. We had LA County there. Many of them are participating virtually. So tonight is that Q&A. I want to answer your questions. I'm not going to stand up here and speak to you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to field all your questions. I, as your city manager, need to know everything that's going on. So I'm going to attempt to answer all your questions based on what I know. If I don't know a question, I will then toss it to our representatives but I want to speak to you one-on-one -on -one and answer your question as best as I can. So with that, I'm going to now open it up for, for questions. And I had my first hand up and I've got Dan Trotner who's going to help with the microphone. So if you want to stand up, introduce yourself and, and yes. I'm Leanne Twidwell. And Hi, I'm Leanne. 32 Sweet Bay Road. Yes, I get all your emails. Yeah, two questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, one, I'd like to know the progress on the mitigation of a landslide with the hydrockers or whatever it is that's going on, because I have heard that there's nothing, they're still on it. The second thing is that somebody told me that the law is that if two utilities leave, this, that you have to move that the city has to tell you to abandon ship. And I wanna know if that's true because we're all worried about Edison. And the third thing is that the fire department has, there is a second route and it's through Mr. York's road. And it's my understanding that he's given permission for them to use that. Okay, okay. I, I, let me try to hit these three questions and I'm gonna hit the first one, the hydrographs. So as you know, the project we've been talking about since 2017 is the, the hydrogers. We submitted a grant. Essentially what the hydrogers are, there, there are two ways of extracting water from the ground, and I'm gonna just keep it very simple. Um, in the ground, there are slip planes that are what's causing the movement. It's made of bentonite, which is slippery clay-like soil when it gets wet. Water is trapped underground. Um, there are two ways to get to it. You could do it through a vertical dewatering well, which most of you are familiar with. We have many of them in the Portuguese Bend area. We've got a few in Klondike. The other is using t engineering technology, which is a horizontal uh, dewatering well called a hydrogger, goes in horizontally. The city has been working very hard. We split our project up uh, based on our grant, and the grant, FEMA had told us the grant doesn't cover projects. Um, until it's been approved. And so if we wanted to go in and do emergency work, we had to pull that out of the project because we still haven't been, we're still going through the vetting process with FEMA. So we did, we split two hydrogers out and we split the project. We submitted that a few months ago. Um, we, were, we were moving towards installing the hydrogers when a question was asked, things look very different today than it did in 2017. Something different is happening out there. We should probably go and do some testing instead of relying on the assumptions and modeling of our geotechnical engineer. So what we started almost two months ago is we, we put out the rig and we've been drilling into the ground 
And I'm very glad that we spent money on that rather than money on the hydrogers, because if we put the hydrogers in, we probably wouldn't be as successful. The test bores that we've done, and right now the, the rig is on the seaward side. I want to thank the beach club for giving us access um, so that we can get, we wouldn't lose any time. What we are learning is there's a deeper slip plane than what we thought initially. What we thought was the Portuguese tough, which is what's causing all the movement, which is 150, 60 feet below the ground. Well, if you go another 150 feet, there's the Altamira uh, slip plane, which is what's actively moving. And that that's what, what's causing, what we believe is causing all this movement. So we are moving forward with our, our project. We just got an announcement today at 11.45 or so from FEMA and Cal OES that they have awarded us, not just selected, but they have awarded us 1.1 million for the first phase of the project. We've been waiting. It usually takes about three years. We, we got it at a much faster rate for the planning. So that's really good news for the community because we've got the funding for that. So that's we're hope to have the hydrogger started in September if everything continues Yes, because we still need what well, the hydrogger is telling us. The data that we're collecting is where that hydrogger needs to go to um, optimize the amount of water we extract from the ground. It, it, this is going to probably be on the shoreline uh, and going upward to to pull all the artesian pressure that's building up at the toe of the landslide. All that water that enters the ground from all the, all the canyons, not just Altamir, we have five or six canyons that water is entering the ground. It's, it will then, it all makes its way to the toe. We're gonna, that's where we're hoping to put the hydrogers in so we can relieve the pressure at the toe. Your second question, um, refresh, your second question had to do with um, if, if utilities, if two utilities, at this point, the building official is the one who makes the decision on whether a structure needs to be red tagged, yellow tagged, or green tagged. That hasn't happened yet. We're still figuring out because some areas don't necessarily are not on the grid. They may not have power. They may not have gas. If you go up into Big Bear and other areas, they may be on. So we're looking at all the options, and I don't want to say. No, you need to get out um, because I know many of you, these are your homes and we're trying to figure all that out um, so that we can get you that information. Because you asked the question, let me talk to you a little bit about property inspections. We are going to be doing property inspections. We are at a point that we have no other choice but to do uh, inspections. What, and I'm going to explain step by step what we're going to do so you are, all of you are aware of and can prepare. Starting tomorrow, the, the city's team, the building uh, inspectors, are going to go out driving the neighborhoods doing a windshield survey, only a windshield survey. What they're, what they're going to be doing is collecting just based on their observations, driving up and down, they're going to they're going to document um, what the, the, the structures that they have a concern with that they need to um, inspect. They'll come back, we'll compile a list, and what we're going to do is send the residents a letter. So you'll get written notification, and we're going to ask you, we're going to identify that we have a concern with the structural integrity of your, your property. We're going to ask you that you voluntarily schedule an appointment with an inspector to come out to inspect your property. If we're going to give you 10 days, if you don't respond, we we will go and get an inspection warrant. And I, I hate to say that, but we are at a point that we have to look at your safety. And that is that is very important. What we want to try to do is identify ways that you can shore up and harden your homes. We're trying to find resources where I know some people have lifted homes up and putting them on steel beams. Um, we've got the, the zone six, the east side of the community that has cargo containers. We're looking at all that stuff to help people protect their homes so that 
more uh, damage doesn't occur to those structures. And hopefully when we get to a point where we can stabilize this landslide, many of those structures don't have to have significant costly repairs. After, once an appointment is made, we will then come and inspect the property. And it was at that point, you'll be given notice on what category the structure has been um, ranked as. Through um, codes, you have an opportunity to appeal that decision. So you can appeal it to a hearing officer and, and make your case and, and demonstrate what you are doing. But please know this is very hard because these are your homes. I, 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 I know what it's, I have a home too. We, our homes are our sanctuaries, but I gotta make sure you're, you're safe. We've gotta make sure everyone's safe. You're, I, 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 can you repeat your third question? Okay. Did, what? Oh, oh, so Jim York, yes. So yes, Jim York, there, Jim has a driveway, although from what I know, and I haven't seen it firsthand, but what I know is he's experiencing some uh, movement on that driveway as well. The fire department has mentioned to me that they see that as a viable uh, ingress egress. I will be reaching out to Mr. York to formalize that so we can have some sort of agreement so we can open that up for the residents and for the first responders. And by the way, um, what Chief Kane had mentioned to me in response to the the challenges in the road conditions and their 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 rigs being able to get to your property, they have a, a vehicle, a larger um, yeah, it's a smaller but larger pickup vehicle that has all the fire apparatus. Sorry about the sun being. Give it another ten minutes; it'll set. Um, yes, I know Jim York very well. I will work with him. He, I, we, we no, leave that to me. I will take care of that. This is very important. I will do that. He sent an email today. I have not had a chance to respond to all the emails that came into my box today. I will do that tonight. Um, Sherry, I know your hands up and we can get the mic. Thank you. My name is Sherry Hastings. I live on Vanderlip Drive in Portuguese Bend. Um, in four to five months, we're going to start having rain again. When we start having rain again, all that storm drain water that's up on Island View and, and Seacrest, that all drains in Daltamira. We get a lot, a lot, a lot of damage from that. Um, and the city actually permitted all of that storm drain to run into a known landslide area back in 1987, before ours time too. But that's not a point at you. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes specifically signed the permits to allow 200 homes and seven miles of road to run into a known landslide area back in 1987. That is part of the damage that we're seeing here today. And um, part of the damage I know we're seeing on Vanderlip Drive, I've confirmed that with the multiple geologists, is the city going to do anything to get that fixed before those rains start, before we start seeing more damage? So the, that, and you have been saying this for a while now, and I take it very seriously. I've read through the Harris study a few times. Ramsey has as well. Um, the message we have conveyed, I, 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 I know there, all the canyons in our open space areas. And by the way, we didn't own all those canyons in 1973 when the city incorporated. They were all privately owned. I think we've all forgotten that. We didn't own all that land. We acquired all that open space. Forestall right behind us was in 1996. In 2004, we acquired um, all the other open space area. But there, there's like six canyons in our open space areas So, so we've got those, all those canyons are natural watersheds that drain into the ocean. I know that, let me finish. I know the water, when it's raining, because of all the fissures, most of that water is not getting to the ocean like it's supposed to. It's recharging the water table. We have, we have talked to LA County uh, Flood Control District and what we're pleading is that we need to do something temporarily, even to just, because we know the rain, the rainy season officially starts October 16th. They're, they're, the, they're the natural watersheds. In, in fact, our, 
let's let's not speak claudia will come i'm telling you what i know so okay then you'll have a claudia you'll have a chance to speak so you can I, look i i want to keep it very civil um i'm telling you what i know if i don't know and i've got something wrong just correct me i'm telling you what i know i have nothing to hide um the the canyons we're asking flood control district to help us i i've learned um at Monday's meeting, because of the fires that are, this is very interesting, because of the fires that are happening in California, if the president declares a federal disaster for those fires, what's very interesting, what opens up is a grant program through FEMA called the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. Any city can apply for that grant for anything. It doesn't have to be tied to the fire. So we're already saying, okay, we got to get a grant in for, for these watersheds so that we can get some measures in place. And let me tell you, I think all of this that's happening, we've got the attention of, of the county. So, um, and they're listening. And, and, and again, I plead that we work out something. I know there's a lot of environmental um, concerns, but right now it's protecting property and protecting rights. That's, that's, uh, paramount here so we will we'll continue to work and you can continue to ask me i will continue to report out i'm going to hand it to claudia because i know she's gonna she's gonna correct me no 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 you do actually no you do because of the uh, the the uh people on on zoom so who who's got the microphone dan where are you outside there you can't go outside you got to stay in this room it's claudia Claudia Gutierrez, PBCA director, or 38 year resident of PB Portuguese Bend. So what to tail on what Sherry was saying is the plans were approved in 1982 for the housing track, stormwater drains to go into Altamira Canyon. That is not a natural drain for all those homes. That could have been planned for another area. In 1982, landslide was already known in our area and the plans were approved it shouldn't have been we're dealing with that now because we're being inundated with the water going into the fissures that needs to be like i said before in the wednesday meetings plugged up we can't wait for a grant our neighborhood will be gone we're already feeling it with the gas being shut off my next question is for edison what happened in that five hour meeting? What's Edison going to do? So, and yes, Claudia, and I've had it, I haven't had a chance to fully vet through the track map that was approved by the city for, for that development. We're, we're looking into it. I do know when I look at the Harris study, when it shows the drainage flows, I do see the drainage going into of that whole upper area going into Altamira Canyon. So it's it's in the document um, and I know how to read drainage plans. And so it is there and I do, and I see where that drainage flows and I see where it splits. I, yep, I, re I read that, but it also raised some concerns regarding the lining and, and it's very interesting in, in a state which we all love because of its natural beauty. There are all these environmental laws and all these laws intended to, to keep our state so beautiful. And that's what that study cited saying, look, because of this, it's going to be a very expensive and um, lengthy process. And we're even being told that now. But we're in a, we're, we're in a state of emergency. And this is the time that all those permits uh, permitting is relaxed because we need to respond. This is this is the time. So um, let me see, Shai, I saw your hand up there, Dan. Okay. So so let let me, let me take a stab at that first, and then I'll I'll see if I miss anything, and then I'll hand it over to Selena. Um, actually, Dan, you may want to come back up here. I may need your mic for Selena. So um, one, one of the reasons why I called this meeting uh, with all the stakeholders Friday afternoon 
And I sent it out around noon and I sent it to everybody, all, all the utilities was I needed to know what was, what was inevitable, what the writing on the wall, what my gut was telling me was the writing on the wall. I needed to hear firsthand in a very honest setting what the plans are and um, or what, what utilities had it in mind. And I say that because, because three days, and, and sorry, Ben, I don't mean to, sh uh, but three days notification for all of us was very, is unacceptable. It's hard to digest. And I think everybody realizes that, but I also um, understand the threat of public safety and I've been doing a lot of research and, and I was very gently reminded and, and it was actually jarring to remember what happened in San Bruno um, when they had a gas leak. And when I look at all of you, that's the last thing we, we want for any of you. So again, I, I have to keep that in mind. But at that meeting, we went around uh, the table and SCE did indicate that they do see concerns safety concerns. Anyone who lives in Seaview knows that those wires are snapping. The poles are, are very loose and they're moving. I saw Monday, Monday while we were having our meeting in here, a, a wire snapped, a pole twisted. Um, there were sparks that were coming out. The fire department was, we're sitting here, we heard the sirens go by. And I, I'm like, I know something's going on. I looked at my Pulse Point app. And if you don't have that app, it's a pretty good app, cool app to have. That's pulse point. Um, and and I, I stopped the meeting. I said, oh, by the way, there's there's a fire. It turns out that there wasn't a fire, um, that it was just for, for preventive purposes. But SCE basically said, we have a concern regarding the entire landside complex area and, and wires um, snapping, holes snapping, that um, and causing a potential wildfire risk in a very high fire severity zone. So they told us that they um, may have to do a shutoff as well. So we said, you need to let the public know that immediately. And that is why, and even, even if it's not in the next week or two weeks, we need to start preparing. I said this, the city is a customer of SCE as well. We, SCE, I'll get to you, Claudia. SCE supplies power to our dewatering wells, the, the sewer system in the Portuguese Bend community. It's the telecommunication facilities. The, the, this, this is a big concern. That, that is, um, that's why you got this letter. We all need to prepare. One of the things I took away from that meeting on Monday was I sat down with the team and I said, we need to start ordering generators and whatever we need to, to keep those dewatering wells uh, energized because the dewatering wells are what we need to help stabilize this landslide. On top of that, our hydrogers are going to be powered by energy, by SCE. If, if we don't have power, we can't have our hydrogers. So we are, we're gonna send a letter to, by tomorrow to SCE pointing these concerns out where the city is going to is stressing to SCE that we're, they need to split these grids and these circuits up immediately, immediately, like now. Um, this is the first time you're hearing that, Selena, and so, but I'm just speaking very honestly. Um, we need to have you split those circuits up so that the impact is minimal um, to residents because the one circuit that feeds um, Seaview feeds the beach club and feeds Seacliff Hills as well. It's one circuit. So that's that's my response. Did I miss something? Do you want me to? That's good to hear. That's something what my suggestion was going to be is to split the grid. Yes. That is every everyone on the same grid. Right. So houses that shouldn't be affected by the landslide or what's going on are being affected. Yes. Same thing with PBCA. There's a problem on Vanderlip. There's not a problem down in PBCA where we have 140 homes. There's no reason for our Edison to go out. There's um, over by Barkentine where the lines go over towards Barkentine. 
The last poll was 944677E. We can hook up to going towards Barkentine where it, there is a power plant over in that direction. There's no reason. It's right there at the end of Narcissa. And that that is what we're stressing to SCE because um, that one circuit, and I'm forgetting the name of the circuit. Uh, I know it's a it's an interesting. What's the name? Okay, what was the name, Selena, for that circuit? Feldspar. Yeah, um, they have names for all the circuits. That circuit feeds almost, uh, I think, upwards of 500 properties, and it includes. It's less than that, it, but it includes all of Seaview. So if you're in or outside the the landslide boundary, you know, on the western end, um, if you're outside of that, it affects you. It affects Sea Cliff Hills. It affects the beach club. So so we take that very seriously. And by the way, Claudia, um, all of our, all of the dewatering wells, Adclad's dewatering wells, the city's dewatering wells, they're all energized. That sewer system is. So we know that we we are saying that. In fact, the report I said that to the reporters all day today when I was speaking to them. So um, let me see. I need a hand up. I, I know Shaw, you were next, and then ma'am, you in the back uh, with your sunglasses. Yeah. And please uh, introduce yourself so that I know. My name is Shaw. My name is Shaw. I live in Seaview. Thank you for arranging this meeting. What what is the criteria or which homes? you will start the voluntary inspections. So the, the inspections are, what's gonna to happen tomorrow, the city and city vehicles are going to drive all of the neighborhoods over the next couple of days. It's a windshield survey. So they're, they're just going to be tracking all the properties. They have a map of all the properties that are on this um, GIS map on the screen. They're going to, based on their, their um, vehicle inspections they're going to categorize green yellow red we will then send you we're not going to knock on your door we're going to send a letter out probably not next week the week after that you'll get a letter and you'll have 10 days from the date to schedule an inspection if not we will go to the court so you've got a few weeks here and what we want to try to do is is if we if we think we can yellow tag it and work with you to help you harden and shore up the property um, to prevent it from getting to the red tag stage, that's what we're going to try to do um, for for the residents. Thank you. It, it, she's asking about the criteria. It's, it's okay. I got it, Dan. It's the criteria of what. What determines a red tag? The building, the building official, once they go inside, they're going to look at the foundation system. They're, I'm just. Oh, oh. Okay. If, if we're driving down the street and we see um we see the roof buckling, if we see cracks in the foundation, if we see um doors that are angled. Um, if we see structural stress from the front facade, that's when we're gonna we're gonna tag it as a, a structure of concern, and then that will prompt the letter. And maybe when we go inside, that's not an issue. It's maybe just surface uh, that maybe stucco can fix or something, or maybe it isn't a structure. We if we go under the house, so so just because we do that windshield uh, survey and you get a letter doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be yellow. My goal, I really want to keep everybody, we've been saying this for a long time, we really want to keep everyone in their structures. But if, at this point, I've got a notice that um, from the fire department, we're getting notices of, of, of sewer breaks, we're getting notices of, of gas. It, it, there is just a point where we cannot no longer face, uh, we're, we're cities here for public safety and that's why we're at that point. Um, I, I promised the lady in the back, um, and if you introduce yourself so I know who you are, there's plenty, we're, we're here for like, we're, we're here for a while, there's plenty of time for your questions, so we'll get to you. You can put your hand down, we'll get to you after she's done. Hi, thank you for hosting this meeting. My name is Huma Ahmed, and I live on Dauntless Drive. Uh, my family's been here for 50 plus years, so we know the area really well. The question that I have for you is, do you have a emergency disaster plan 
for seniors and vulnerable members of our community who are not engaged online. And if you don't have the resources, because I know City Hall is pretty small when it comes to staffing, um, is that have you reached out to other local municipal agencies who do have experts in disaster service um, assistance in communications and outreach to borrow some of their staff and resources to provide us with that kind of assistance? Great question. Um, I started my, my planning career in Malibu and I remember uh, one of the brush fires coming through and how fast it came through and how destructive and it left. And I grew up in the area. I know how destructive, it, but I also know as an Eagle Scout to be prepared back in, back in October, when we said the council declared a local state of emergency, we began preparing a contingency plan. So senior, the senior community is of great concern to our city. We do have a plan. We're gonna be rolling that out in the days to come. On Monday, LA County Office of Emergency Management was in this room. We had a meeting with them yesterday. We are putting together that plan and resources to make available. In fact, I wanted, before you leave, I have a question for the community about what resources, I'm, I'll ask that later. Um, yes, we do have a plan. Let me, one of the things I love about this community is whenever there's there's an incident, um, everyone comes together. And Friday when the announcement was made, so many people started contacting me. We want to help. How can we help? What can we make available? Our, our partners in the community, Terranea, UCLA South Bay, Salvation Army, they all are We've been talking to them since October about agreements for a temporary accommodations. They have all offered facilities. You know, Terranea, it's peak season right now, but Ralph Grippo had told me as of this morning, they have about 20, 30 rooms they can do on a discount rate. UCLA, South Bay, you know, they have, that was Marymount. They have the dorms off PV Drive North. They said they can make that available as well, Salvation Army. More important, we need to find out what this, our senior community needs so that we can connect them with those the resources through LA County. Um, we are meeting now every Tuesday and Thursday with um, all the community stakeholders, all the utility and LA County OEM. We, every, twice a week, we're gonna meet and strategize and, and get those plans out so that we can be there to um, provide resources to the community. And by the way, um, a letter went out today to Cal OES and FEMA. I signed it. I know I told the mayor that you were going to sign it, but we'll put it on the council's agenda. Um, but we just felt like we don't have enough time pleading that they um, provide individuals with grant assistance. Um, the, the declaration that was declared by the president um, a few months ago was only for public assistance. It's very interesting when you break down all this disaster um, recovery laws and stuff. A, the state doesn't, I hate to say this, the state does not recognize landslides as a disaster. So when you, when you look at the Emergency Services Act, the California Emergency Services Act and the California Disaster Assistance Act, landslides are not defined as, as a disaster. That is so frustrating because even if FEMA deployed resources, if it's a landslide, it doesn't qualify. What we're operating under are the winter storms. The winter storms qualify. You know, there's ways to interpret things. So we're operating, and I know the districts are operating. Uh, we, we encourage the two districts, even the community association, I know there's some challenges there too, to submit requests into under that disaster. Um, Senator Allen, I don't know how many of you know this. I've been talking about it. Um, I, I worked very closely with him over the last uh, several months. SB 1461, I know it by heart. He has authored a bill and we supported it because we helped author it that would change the definition of the CDAA and the ESA. How many of you know about that? How many of you submitted support letters? Thank you. All of your hands should have gone up. 
sub subscribe to this and you will you will get that information. We need to put pressure to change laws that were put in effect many, many years ago. You things change and you need to change that. In fact, I was told on Monday from our federal representative that there's an amendment um, co-authored by Representative or Congressman Liu um, to amend the Stafford Act at the federal level to include landslides. I said, I said to our federal electors, I said, that's great. That's wonderful. But guess what? It doesn't mean anything to us because once that goes into effect for the entire nation in California, Cal OES does not consider landslides a disaster. So whatever relief comes hits a roadblock and we don't get those fundings. So we sent a letter out. It went out today for individual assistance. I'm trying to get you, even if it's thirty, forty thousand dollars in a grant, I'm trying to get money for each of you to help shore up and harden your homes. Every dollar counts. Um, I, 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 I said you were next, sir. Okay, I may have to go to online soon. I got a lot coming in. Hi, Bill Lockwood. Uh, we're at 20 Narcissa. Um, thank you for doing this. Uh, I know we all appreciate it. Um, but I feel a little bit like we're getting buried under a bit of verbiage here. Um, so if there could be, it, it could be a tiny bit more concise because we're never going to get to all the questions by nine o'clock. And I know you're doing your best. I really do. I really do appreciate it. What do you it. want me to be more concise on? Tell uh, me. Just shorten those answers down, okay. um, you know, so we can get to more people. My question is, um, what happened at that meeting? Can we have a summary? People want to know, you kind of answered what's going to happen with SCE, but are they pulling out? What about Cal Water? What about Spectrum? What about all these other players that were sitting there um, I know that there's information and waiting for the question to be asked to give it to us uh, is a, a little bit, uh, makes it, at least it makes me impatient. Ask me the question and I'll answer it. I'm I just did. To, okay. So Cal Water said, no, they're not going to pull out. They're committed, especially for fire leaking. Thank you. They're, they're putting all the, they said that. I'm telling you what they said. Um, they're putting pipes above ground. They're doing all that. I'm not going to be concise. So no, SCE did not say that a power shut off is going to happen this week, next week, but they put a notice out saying they couldn't tell us when, but if it gets to a point that it's warranted, they will try to give us as advanced notice as they possibly can. Um, I, what, what's that? You know, I, I'm not going to take a stab at that. I may ask Selena what the criteria is because I don't know what the criteria is. I just know that we have been put on notice that the power may go out. Let me, let me answer a few more questions in terms of, communications, whether it's Cox and Frontier, they were both at this meeting. They both rely heavily on power. So they're committed to keeping those facilities. However, they said if, if the power goes out and the utilities um, are shut off, they would try to bring in what's called a communication on wheels, those that they have at carnivals and stuff where it's it's a trailer. I know, um, Kent, we've, we, and Claudia, we've tried to get those out with Crown Castle but that's Crown Castle. Maybe maybe the the actual um, carriers would be able to do that in this case for emergency purposes. Did I answer all your questions concisely? Yes. Um, okay. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for that. Um, but I think that all of us here feel that the time for talking about this stuff has long since passed. And it is definitely the time for action. And I think that we would all feel better if there was more action. But that has to come from not only you guys, but also us banding together and helping each other, uh, sharing the resources, um, being able to, you know, push the officials and get this stuff done. But uh, the, the hand wringing and finger pointing isn't helping. It's time for us to do and not talk. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. We, and agreed. We're going to be concise. So let me answer two questions on my iPad here and then. We're here. We'll get to. I'll get to your question, sir, in the blue shirt. So this is from Guri. Um, I, Guri, you're you're in the audience. I saw you. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. That's what you're asking. Yeah, come on up. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to answer your question. Sure. Um, the question was, what are the conditions that are warranted? Um, I can share that what we're seeing in the field is very different from anything we've ever seen before. Um, I'll give the example of the outage we had on Monday. That was on the very back corner of the Seaview neighborhood where Dauntless and Exultant connect at that horseshoe area. What we saw on Monday was an area that we had previously serviced just seven days prior. And we put what's called slack between two lines. And so that means we gave a little bit of give so that it could move along with the land movement. That was just a week ago. And so in seven days time, two poles that were once connected with three feet of slack snapped in half. These are the conditions we're seeing in the field. And this is why we wanted to be proactive and let you all know that we are seeing conditions in the field that we have not seen before that could potentially lead to service disconnection. That is just one example. We've seen other examples in the Portuguese Bend neighborhood. I wanna go back to the question you had about the communities being on one circuit. We have the ability to sectionalize the circuits. As soon as you stood up your state of emergency, Edison started an internal working group and we have been working on design standards to better sectionalize the communities affected by the landslide. We are working on that. We have been working on that. We've had the designs. We are engineering it. We are working on it. We also, to dovetail that, are recognizing the conditions in the field are changing rapidly. We are designing for these things. And then we are going out in the field and seeing that the conditions have changed from what has been designed. This is why we are being honest and transparent with you. Yeah. Excuse me, I would like to continue and then I'll, I'll take some more questions, honestly. Uh, can, I, can I finish as soon as I'm finished? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so that is, that is what we're seeing. That is the work that we're doing. We have a field crew that will be out in your neighborhood starting tomorrow. They're going out to continue to look at the conditions in the field so we can continue the work to sectionalize and improve your communities. We ask that you allow them into the rear of your homes. A lot of your poles are behind your homes. Please let them in. Some of you are not letting them in. The faster we get in for our inspections, the faster we are able to engineer changes in your community. If you don't have a pole where you live, you may soon have a pole because we're moving poles around to keep your neighborhood energized. That's all we're asking is for you guys to work with us, let our crews in, let them do what they need to do, and we will continue to work with the city moving forward. Thank you. Everything up there connects the grid. It shows the feet. They turn it off. They know. Right. And, and power cables. They all automatically will will disconnect. Well, Why well, don't we do that? Where it's going into a slide area. Area. So what what we're trying? No, those are those are those are legitimate, and that's the city. That's the letter that we're sending tomorrow to SCE because we too, the city needs to make sure. Uh, if there is a shutoff, that it's minimal. We are we rely communications relies the city relies. Yes, we are. We're gonna we're not gonna let that go. This is this is way too important for all of us. The dewatering wells, the hydrogers, those are all very important. Your your homes, emergencies, getting those we alerts and all those things. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to two questions here. Your, your your questions, I'm going to break them down there and real quickly here. You asked, is the city going to provide information and simplify the permit requirements for solar power? Um, yes. So all of you that are looking at finding alternate means for power, um, gas, we the building department, we are waiving all the fees. They, the building inspectors and the building department are um, ready to issue over-the-counter approvals, work with you. 
for solar is a lot more complicated because you need to have engineering plans, especially if you're putting it. Propane, they will walk you through what you need for a tank, how to properly install it, and all those converter kits. Call the bill. We're going to put all that information out. They're ready. They've issued it. Some people, I don't know how many of you got permits, or maybe you don't want to ask me. Okay, I want to ask you the question. Um, but um, the building and the department did issue permits. They're all they're all being waived. Next question, I'm being concise. Um, and this same goes with batteries. Actually, one of the things that uh, is Marion Hunter in here. Um, Marion, you sent me an email. I tried to send it back to you, but it was through your text. Um, you suggested having some sort of contractors fair. I thought it was brilliant. We're gonna we're gonna try to do that and get. A, it's not going to be hosted by the city because the city can't uh, recommend. I'm going to hopefully work with the PBCA to do that here as part. We'll have one room for resources that are through the county, the city, the state, and then we'll do another room where you could have like a contractor's fair. So yes, um, how is the city okay with SoCal Gas not providing serious information, actual plans, and more information to the? We don't think it's okay. It's not acceptable. Um, we've conveyed that to that. I've already sort of commented on that, so I'm going to move on. How does the city interpret the statement that SoCal gas will return when the landslide stabilizes? I, I the, you know, we, we, we chuckle, but um, my goal is I really want to stabilize this landslide. And, and I, I don't, we've done it. It's been, it's been managed. When, when Adclad put in those dewatering wells in the 80s, it's been stabilized. In fact, the courts ruled and said, you need to let people build because it was stabilized. Um, I don't know what, what they're saying. I understand, Claudia, I understand. Um, anyway, I we're, we we are determined to stabilize. I'm not saying we're gonna stop this landslide. I'm saying we are determined. Ramsey, the whole public works team, the whole city, the city council, we are determined. We are gonna put all of our resources, we are pulling money and we are we're doing everything to stop this landslide or man, man, manage, manage. Um, what is the focus on, why is the focus on temporary housing contingency plans rather than uh, rather than how to help practical information? I think it's both. I think I'd be living under a rock if I didn't say we need to plan and we need to be prepared. Some of you may have um, other places to go and other resources, some of you may not. And I have to make sure those people are, are taken care of. Next question is, what is being done by the city to stop more companies from discontinuing public utility services to Portuguese Bend? Why does the city not challenge the, safe, the safety issues? We are, we're questioning it. We've got our legal team looking at it. Um, next set of questions come from John Tootle. Um, he asks, um, provide layout of SCG, SCG lines and connections to assist residents with locating propane text, tanks, we can do that at the building department. And by the way, the building official told me all he needs is a, is a plot plan where you plan on putting the um, the tank and you just need to put, um, the pipes need to be buried, they can't be exposed and he'll help you uh, identify how to make the connections inside your house. SCE to identify where service to the area residents is coming from and what the lines are at issue. We can work with SCE, SCE to get that information. I sort of said, or see view, there's that one circuit, it's coming in from the east here. Um, can water company convert to electronic meters and install a master meter to our area? I, I would have to pass that question to Cal Water. No one's here from Cal Water. Uh, did the city cancel? I'm sorry? They, they were unable to, to be here, but I can pass that question to them. Um, but they did say they're, they're not pulling out, so. Um, no one told me they're here. So if someone from Cal Waters here, raise your hand. Um, I got an email saying they weren't here. Um, next question is, did the city cancel its maintenance contract to convert under PV drive within the past six years? Canceled to convert uh, the, the, the culvert? Uh, Okay, the, the, from all from where the gate is, the Narcissa Gate over. Um, 
uh, Ramsey, I, 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 we're not aware of that. I think we, we actually approved um, some extra funding for that. The, the question was, there, there's an actual pipe. Yeah, Ramsey, if you want to come up, there's a pipe that goes right where the Narcissa Gate that takes all that water from Altamira Canyon under PV Drive South, and then it, it daylights on the other end, almost where the gate is. So the question is, we're not maintaining it. Um, I believe we are maintaining. We have. I have no knowledge of a contract being canceled for that particular work, but I. Sorry, I have no knowledge of a contract being canceled for that. I will research the records and uh, find out the facts. If I'm not mistaken, I thought something went to the council recently for. With the, yeah, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah. We so we did. Yeah, because we do have a. We I I recall a contract going to. The council, we have a joint agreement with AgClad. They pay a portion of it. I think it was like 75, 25, something split. So yeah, it's still being maintained. Okay, we'll, we'll affirm that. Let me get to the next question. Within Abalone Cove, is conservancy still watering? Um, so I think the question is, is the newly acquired property that we um, in, the, in the land conservancy was able to purchase from, from Jim York they're, they're not watering it, although they do want to start doing some hand watering in the area for um, for reveg purposes. It is very much a, a concern of the city, any more water, especially that area is experiencing um, major movement. We're working very closely with the Land Conservancy to ensure if any watering does occur there, that it is done minimally um, to, to uh, minimum, uh, minimize any impact to the land side. And, and the irrigation system is not active. We have asked them to turn it off. Um, we asked them almost a year ago to turn it off. Let me just get through these, these questions because I said, and then I'll go back to the audience. Is work being done to ensure Altamira Canyon water that arrives at PV Drive South makes it to the ocean? Yes, so I answered that question. Can the city provide dirt to rest? Yes. Um, all of you, would, during the rain season, People were reaching out to us for dirt to put in the backyards. When we get to that point, we will we will work with you and get you the dirt to fill those fissures. The fissures are one of the culprits to all the rain. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the audience. You, uh, gentlemen over there, if you want to say your name so I don't just point to you. Uh, Tim Kelly, Six Fruit Tree Road. So yeah, hi. Um, can somebody define what shutdown is? We get... Uh, Little emails from Cal Water, you know, three times a week. It's shut down. I know they're going to fix the leak, and in 20 minutes or two hours, whatever, we're back on. We get something from SoCal Gas, shut down. Is that does something gets fixed, or is that forever? And I'm going to throw the same thing over to SoCal Edison. What does shut down mean? Cal Water, I trust them. I think they're there for the long term. Uh, SoCal Gas, have, I think they've abandoned us. And I hope to Jesus that SoCal Edison hasn't done the same thing. So, Selena and Ben, do you want to comment on, on the, the question about shutdown and what that means? I can tell you what I know is what I was told is SoCal Gas shut off gas to the Portuguese Bend Community Association until the landslide is is stabilized that 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 is that's what i i was told so i don't know if you want to yeah please come on up thanks Zara. uh really quick thank you everybody for having us here i really appreciate it um i understand this is a really difficult situation and uh thank you for your patience thank you to kent and claudia for being so helpful and communicating with the community thanks to the city uh also in being helpful we we really appreciate it um, to answer the question, the simple answer is that uh, we just don't know when it will be safe to, to turn it back on. It's a dynamic land movement situation, right? And so um, when it's accelerating uh, and when that situation stabilizes, we'll be able to better assess that situation to make a determination. Okay. I'm going to hand this back over to Ara. Thank, thank you, Ara. Thank you, everybody. Selena, maybe you can answer the question. I think a lot of people want to know. We got we got the notice. What does that mean? Um, and what is shut off? 
and maybe you can help expand on that. Um, yes, so um, when we experience an outage in your neighborhood, the first thing you will experience is a repair outage, your power will go out. We will send a crew, a troubleman out to the field in an attempt to fix it. And the troubleman tries to fix it on their own or they place a repair order and call a crew. Um, in this particular situation for your neighborhoods, we will be making a determination as to the ability to complete the repairs. And we first and foremost prioritize safety. If it is safe to repair, we will absolutely repair it. If it's something that will require engineering and civil on site first, you may experience a longer than normal outage while we try once again to safely restore your service. If it is just too unsafe to restore your service, we will inform you of that as well. We will know when we were in the field observing the conditions. It is our number one priority for safety. We also want to continue to serve you if it is safe to do so. So we will go on site, observe the conditions, and we have very talented linemen, troublemen, workers. They accomplish amazing things. We just want to make sure we are doing it safely. And did you have any other questions? Yes, one, one more. Um, when SoCal said, when SoCal Gas said there was a danger on Friday evening at 7.30 and we're going to shut you off on Monday morning, I would have appreciated if they shut us off at 7.30 on Friday evening. Then I understand that it's a safety issue. But to say that it's going to be safe for two more days and then Monday morning when we can't do anything about it, and we've got healthy people here today. You go back into the neighborhoods and you've got old people, old people minding other old people who are disabled, and can't do anything about it. They got no hot water to wash somebody. I mean, it's a real health and safety. So I don't believe this thing about 7.30 or nine o'clock on Monday morning, it was unsafe. It, that's a very arbitrary thing. Kit, uh, I know Kit, you had your hand up. And then sir, we'll, we'll come to you. Yeah, two, uh, one comment and a couple of questions. One is, is that Cal Water, for whatever flaws they may have had in the past, has been a model for our community. So I'm in Seaview and they've been working regularly with us with honest meetings that are very straightforward where they put out the issues, they listen to comments, they take concerns, they take them back, they work their teams and then they come back to us. We are asking for the same from SoCal Gas and from SoCal Edison. This is the first time I've heard any information from Edison about what they're doing in the community. And we've been at the Wednesday stakeholders meetings now for eight months, and this is the first time we've heard information. So I'm just imploring to you, follow the, so the, um, the SoCal water model and meet with community representatives on a regular basis. We're all adults. We can take bad information. We can understand that. And to hide behind the facade of saying, oh, well, this is privileged information. We can't do that is really not acceptable. I credit Ben because SoCal Gas has finally come to the table with us to meet on a regular basis, and I appreciate that. You're letting us know what crews are doing, but we need to have that from all of the utility companies on a regular basis. And if they're not gonna do it in the Wednesday forum, then there should be a separate session set up for that. The second question I have is, you talked about preparing for the worst. We're all hoping the hydrographers will work. We're all hoping that these efforts will slow things down, but I am not hearing, and I would like to hear, how are you gonna work with community groups to prepare for the possibility that the land movement doesn't stop because that's going to be catastrophic and you don't want to wait till the last minute to start planning with communities about what can happen and that goes with utilities as well it, one of the questions i'm going to ask before everyone leaves is and i'll say it now so you can think about it when i met with la county office of emergency management yesterday who have been incredible kevin mcgowan the director i have been talking to him for two years makes himself available at all times. Before we bring a resource center, we want to know the resources you need for uh, preparing. So at the end, and if you want to just jot it down, if you want to email or tell me, I, I'll ask that question, but I want you to think about what you as a community need. Uh, Dana. Yeah, 
Oh no, I Dana, I told the gentleman in the back first. Sorry. Then you, Dana. Dana Hart, Six Sweet Bay, uh, resident of Portuguese been for about 12 years. I gotta tell you, R, every time I've dealt with you and met with you, you've been a gentleman and a half. But I'll tell you straight, I am livid, man. I got I wrote down so much stuff, I gotta get it back up again. So first off, Jim York did give us permission and he allowed the padlock keys to be given to everybody in our neighborhood. We all have access okay. to gold. It's, so this thing, we maybe we can, maybe we can't. We don't know what Jim's going to say. Jim gave us permission, except for Claudia. All of us have his permission to go in and out of his gate. So there's nonsense. We don't have a second entrance. Okay, I didn't it's know just that. bullshit. No, it's not. I didn't know that. And people are asking me, and I'm talking to the fire department. So thank you for telling me that. Okay. I did not know that. Okay. The next one, the gas, the gas emergency. Guys, girls, everybody here, we got played. That's the truth. This whole time, I'm the one dealing with this. Nobody else. I'm at Claudia, uh, excuse me, Marianne Hunter's house constantly. I'm at uh, Corinne's house constantly. 20, 30 breaks all the time. Never an emergency. It wasn't health and safety. Sometimes they used to come out there and smell, say, I don't smell too bad. Maybe we'll come back tomorrow. It got so bad at Corinne's house. She called me up screaming at me, come and save me. My dogs are going to die. I don't know when they're going to come here. Corinne, 911. If the gas companies don't respond to you, call 911 because they respond to the firemen. But they find something else. Now it's too much. It got overwhelming. When we didn't even recognize it over on the east side, right? The swing joint, the above ground stuff has worked for 50 years. They're almost done doing the west side, and now they can't do it. This is bullshit, too. Probably the second quarter of the year, they closed the books. They looked at it. Whoa, we've been spending a lot of money here. Let's get out of this thing. We don't want to get a temporary restraining order. Let's let everybody know on Friday in soft words. Now we're going to do it. Saturday is full bland. Full blown. We're going to do it. Monday, we, we're stuck. We got played. We totally got played. Okay, Island View. This is another mess. It's not exactly the downstream that's always been there for years, and it's kind of this thing that's always been there. When you put asphalt, roofs, sidewalks, the rain that hits the community comes immediately into our community. If it's natural, it goes to the plants, it goes to the wind, it goes to the sun, it goes the other way, it goes in pools and evaporates. So to say that this was always a natural thing that always occurred, and now all of a sudden it's an emergency, it's another thing of bullshit. It changed when we have roads, roofs, sidewalks, okay? Then the last one, bear with me. Oh, can't see here. When you don't have any slack between two poles, it's called the catenary. The catenary is gone. When the catenary is gone, then we start putting pressure on the different power poles. Personally, I have called in SCE three times to Portuguese bin because I'm all walking around. There's no catenary here. See, SCE didn't know that. So I'm doing the inspection for these guys. Okay. That is absolute bullshit. Okay. And if there's a big giant problem to figure out how to get the power from the other one, I will go out there, bring with the guys. I will design it in two hours. Okay. So this is not this overwhelming problem that can't be solved. I will do it for you. Meet me out there. I'll tell you how to do it. And away we go. Okay. Thank you. I know, Dana, you, you were next. Hi, Dana Ireland. Uh, thank you for having this meeting. I used to live in the community with you. Uh, I live very nearby now, so I, I feel your pain. One thing that I heard tonight that really alarmed me is the city's discovery that this landslide may be 300 feet deep and not 150. Do you have knowledge if that's across the entire complex? Entire complex? Is that just in Portuguese Bend? Is that in the Abalone Cove landslide? Because as I understand it, this, the slide is accelerating and it has accelerated every month that we've measured it. We're now supposedly at five feet per month or 60 feet per year. I don't know how you maintain any utilities at that kind of movement rate. So we've, we the test bores have only been uh, in, in the area near Gateway Park. And now we started on the seaward side. So that's the only area that we've studied. However, um, 
I've, I've spoken to various individuals who have said that Altamira Canyon, Altamira slip plane has always been there. And in fact, that, that was activated in the 70s. Um, I guess there was an ins there was active uh, land movement 77, 78. So um, the question that we were trying to figure out is we thought it was the Portuguese tough that was moving, but and that's what was moving five years ago. But the geologist was saying, Cotton Shires was saying, something different is happening. We need to drill deeper. And that's when we saw, we knew it's there. It just, we didn't know that was, was active. And then the, once we knew it was active, the next question was, is there water, is there, there artesian pressure? And we just found that out um, the other day that there is. There's artesian pressure below the Altamira Tuff as well as below the Portuguese Tuff. Did I get that right? Um, who wants to go next? Man, you can go. Up. Thank you for moving your card. Um, Patty, I live on 4393 Dauntless, and I know water is our worst enemy, and I know there's a pipe going into Klondike Canyon that is dropping 59,000 gallons a day, and that's on city property, and I was wondering... Is there any plan to plug that up or? So we're working with KCLAD, the Klondike Canyon Landside Abatement District to pipe all that water. In fact, um, Saturday at this neighborhood meeting that we had, uh, there was a resident, I'm forgetting his name, Charlie, who, who spoke and said, the residents in Rolling Hills are working to put a pipe in. They asked the question, are you willing to connect to the pipe? And we said, yes, we will work with KCLAD um, to make that connection. I know, is anyone here from uh, KCLAD, Nick or Steve? They have a plan uh, to uh, to pipe that water. And so we're, we just need to accelerate that project yeah, and get it done. I live on the canyon and I can see it as eroding and water is our worst nightmare. Which, which street are you on? Did you Dauntless. On Dauntless, okay. Yep. And we were also told that the fishers were going to start being graded up there behind Shaw's house and I've only seen the golf cart go up there. Yeah, we, so, so <laughs> right now the, well, yeah, you laugh, but we were doing, we were filling the fissures during the rainy season to prevent water from recharging. We will start that up again when we get to that point. And, um, but yes, and by the way, again, I can't reiterate, if you need soil, let us know. I know Donnie, we kept bringing you soil. Anytime people needed soil, we said, yes, we would bring you soil. Um, I'm Ma'am, I'm going to go to you in the back. I'll go to Kent. Um, so, ma'am, yes. If you, it, I didn't see, I can't see, it's hard up here with the, okay, saw it. Go ahead. Hi, 33 Sweet Bay. Um, Your name? Cal Your Bay name? Woodruff. Okay. Um, Edison has stated that they are able to section the electricity off. When will they do that and how long will the time period be? Do you want to come up and answer that? That's a good question. We all want to know. Whole, whole, whole area. We talked about it already. So um, we are currently working on finalizing the designs and plans. They should be done in three to four months. I want to, I want to stress that as we complete this work, we have to continue to make sure the conditions are matching the plans. And that's kind of what happened here, which is why we're out doing additional field checks. We wanna make sure the work is able to be designed. But I can confirm that we are working on the sectionalizations of both communities. As a follow-up to that question, if it's gonna take you three to four months to even come up with a design plan, Oh, that's, how, that's to implement, ma'am. To implement, mm -hmm. okay. How are we assured that we're not going to lose service during that time? Um, that is why we we sent you the letter. We are in a beyond design. We are in a beyond design experience right now. We design our poles to be in solid ground safely. What we are experiencing in your neighborhoods is not those conditions, which is why we're being really honest with you. We are designing solutions but there is the very real probability 
that the implementation may not be feasible when we complete it. We are doing the work. The land is also doing what the land is doing. We are working diligently to make the solutions happen. We are also working against a dynamic situation. That is an emergency, ma'am, and we have been working. Yes, ma'am, that is very fast for design, engineering, and implementation. I so so from the city's perspective, that that is a long time, and I'm very concerned for a variety of reasons. And I, I have I have a quite. It's actually a question in one of the emails I saw, but I I was looking at Lene and. I know you you take care of your sister, and, and I my question to you is, um, and this is a question that was raised. SCE has programs for um, for people who have disabilities or who are on medical equipment. In the what what could you how could you respond to that to those individuals that are caring for people with disabilities or um, illnesses or seniors that rely that need it for um, oxygen and so forth. I'm, I'm happy to answer that. I am a caregiver myself, caring for an elderly parent that needs 24 seven care. Shout out to my family who's watching my mother tonight so I can be here. Um, we have identified all of the medical baseline customers in those areas and we stand ready to assist those residents to get what they need um, should the need arise. We have a list, I saw it just this morning. We do that. We confer with the city when we have to shut off those residents, we confer with sheriffs, and we make sure that those residents who are identified as medical baseline have that assistance. If you think you should be identified as medical baseline and you don't believe you have been, please reach out to the city who will reach out to me and we will make sure your family is included as medical baseline. After that, um, please let me know if you need those, I, I want to create it. I want, we don't have that information at the city. If you don't mind sharing that with me, we'll create a database and make sure we get it to SE. That way we also know, and we could share that. I know the fire department said they need to know who who is uh, in a vulnerable demographic so that they can have a list. Please email that to me. I will start working with the team to compile that list. Um, So the letter hasn't been finalized yet, and I'm hearing, um, so it'll be modified before it goes out. Yeah, I do. I do. We we need to we need to work together, but I need to stress we don't have three to four months to wait. So, um. You have one more question, and then I'm going to go on to other people. I just here. want to make a comment. Three to four months will put us towards the rainy season. And this is bad enough that people don't have air conditioning, but they sure can't live without heat. So I, I would implore that Edison take some action sooner, because this is a decade-old problem. Um, Kent, I know I said I'd come to you. Uh, Dan, can you, for Kent? And then Rainy, I know your hand was up. We'll go there and then we'll come back. I'm going back and forth. Oh, Nikki, then we'll go. We'll go oh. Rainy, then Nikki. Okay, go ahead, Ken. Uh, Ken Attridge. We're here. Uh, We're not going anywhere. BBCA Director uh, 15 Sweepe. I have uh, a question and uh, also a comment. The, the question, uh, you know, um, we're grateful for the uh, federally declared disaster president signed that allowed us to apply uh, for SBA uh, loans. There's another aspect of, of that federal declared disaster that uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, ask questions about. Uh, supposedly, under under those conditions, and, and looking forward to people's uh, uh, future income taxes, uh, there is a there is a provision under casualty and theft that if you have a qualified EM number for uh, a disaster, you can. Uh, deduct that from your from your federal income tax. Uh, for example, uh, and I looked at, I looked on the FEMA website and there were a whole number, a whole bunch of EM numbers under the landslide 
uh, flood zone, but no days past March of so uh, of, of, of this of, year of, of twenty three. So I, I want to find out if we are going to get an EM number that's if it's qualified. What that allows you to do. The reason I, I looked into this was because if I have to move somewhere, I've got a big IRA. I don't want to have. I'm going to have to use that to, for a down payment on a on a new residence. I don't want to have to pay 35 or 40 percent for that. And if if I can declare this as a, 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 a use that a condition, right? Okay. I can I can write you know. A, but $2 million off is the economic loss for my house and not pay income taxes for the next two years. I, I got the gist of that. We're taking notes. If you can follow up with an email, I will I will forward that on to FEMA and Calgary S to see if they can help us answer that question. I, I did. So, so I think we were going to... What, what was that, Donnie? Okay. But that's yeah, that's that's property taxes. I think he's talking about if he has to use some IRA money um, and that he doesn't get taxed on it because of an emergency. Yeah, no, and I'll talk about property taxes afterwards. But Rainy, I know you were. Well, I, I just had I, then I just had one comment. Okay, back to uh, uh, SCE and uh, using your example of well, we went out seven days later and we saw things were rallying different. Uh, as a as a uh, again, lessons learned from Cal Water. They're in our neighborhood 24 seven. All right. Uh, I would suggest that you increase your monitoring to daily. Uh, poles don't, uh, power poles don't fall out, fall down over overnight. We're not in a PG and E, you know, a uh, storm knocking down wires and causing fires where we are. Uh, you have plenty of uh, surveillance, you know, you got drones. Uh, it seems to me that you could minimize or even eliminate most of your concerns if you had uh, more frequent monitoring. Neighborhoods. Yes, um, I'm really glad you brought that up. We do have field crews, um, walk. we have crews that walk the neighborhoods, and we also are having, we have drone surveillance in your communities. I was working with Megan on an announcement that was going to go out. Thank you for bringing that up. You will be seeing drones in your neighborhood as we do drone surveillance to um, better assist with the engineering and the movement. So thank you so much for that. So, so, so the letter that was issued. So, how, how, how many people yesterday, how many people got the letter from SC in your email? Okay. How many got it? I want to see how many people got the letter. Wow, that's it. That that's it. So most okay. I know. So we we put something in our community update too. But um, so Selena, what is what is the website? It's sce dot. Okay, it's sce.com slash RPV. If you go to the city's um, uh, city manager's report that published today, as well as the community update, if you go to this QR, it, the link is there um, to, to get that information. Yeah, that's... So um, what I would suggest just from my experience, um, Go in if you're not getting noticed, you may want to go back and resubscribe to uh, go on the SCE's website, just their general, and everyone should resubscribe just in case um something happened or whatever. Put in your email, put your it, it doesn't hurt to even if you start getting multiple ones. This is important. Um, I know Rainy, you were next, and then Nikki, and then um we'll we'll get I'll get to everybody. So you don't need to keep your hands up. I don't want you firing up. <laughs> Okay. I'm. I'll, I'll call to you, Colleen. I'll call you, and you can read it. I don't have it open here, so. Okay. But. Hi, Rainy Sherman, uh, CV Residents Association, Admirable Drive. Uh, I, I, as a recovering designer myself, I, uh, I understand designing in a dynamic situation. It's almost impossible. You have to stay on it Im immediately, and I get, I get why. 
Selena has basically said three to four months. It's not not acceptable, but I understand that. But what about the fringe areas that are not dynamic? The idea is to segregate or separate the grid. So there were 330 homes affected by the outage on Monday night. Only about 100 of them are within the district that really is dynamic. And uh, maybe 140 if you take in Portuguese band. The, but the outage on Monday? On Monday. So I heard it was 40. 40. I, I get that, and you were on it, and you fixed it in two hours. I get that, and we appreciate that. The point the point I'm trying to make is that many of us in the community are out dynamic moving area, and we're not affected by this landslide other than being empathetic to our and and dealing with this on a on a, an emotional basis for our for our our com com community. So the point is is why why can't we segregate the fringe areas? those areas that are not dynamic and not moving quicker than three to four months. That would eliminate a number of things. Point number and let me respond okay. to that uh, because we had a conversation about that. Can you split? Because there's so many homes that are outside the landside area that would be affected by this one circuit. Um, in the case of the circuit that serves Seaview, the landslide is all the way to the west, uh, to the west. And it's on the fringe, like you're saying. So they're they're working very. We're going to stress that that they they create a split there, so um, all the other homes are not affected. It, and the second question is, is is there a same is the is there a segregated area set up or a grid set up for the gas as well, so that if there is an issue with gas on the western side of Seaview and Portuguese Bend, it, will it affect the east side of Seaview? And I don't have an answer to that, so I'll ask Ben to answer that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So uh, the way CV is configured, we're able to install uh, isolation valves on certain streets so that we can turn it off in, in succession where we need to. Okay, Nikki, you're, you're next. Mike, you'll, you'll go next. Thank you. All right, thanks. I have a three-part question. One, my name is Nikki Nushkam uh, from uh, Seaview Neighborhood 4354 Exultant Drive. Um, part one, you mentioned with regards to the activities associated with the Hydewoggers, we first started in 2017. Can you please tell us a little bit more about what the city has done before then, besides the wells that were drilled back in the 80s, which had been not functioning for years, um, besides doing studies? So what has the city done, knowing that this is a landslide? And, and this is, please don't take it as an attack on you. I just want to understand. The other question that I have is with regards to yellow tagging and red tagging of homes. Would well, like to understand what would happen to the individuals and what are the plans for the individuals? So you come to somebody's home, you determine that they're either yellow tagged or red tagged, what happens next? And the third part is, if you're going to basically have us get out of our homes because it's not safe, what kind of accommodations are you going to provide us and are you going to reimburse us for this? If you're going to kick us out, we are looking for reimbursements and support to be able to have an opportunity to not go bankrupt. Thank you. So, so let me answer those three parts as best as I can. The first one had to do with what has the city been doing about the landslide? For the most part, this landslide has been managed um, with the ACLAD has the dewatering wells in the Abalone Cove area. ACLAD has their dewatering wells and they've managed. And we own some of those wells. There were agreements from the 90s that were signed by the then council that uh, funds the, the, the wells 
for uh, the districts. You know, we have two districts in our city. These districts were the first geologic hazard abatement districts that were formed in 1980, 1981 with the intent to mitigate and remediate landslides. The only area out of the whole complex that was not part of a landslide abatement district, which if you live in that area, you pay into that district. You're being assessed and that district is, is there to serve you and work for you to mitigate landslide. You're paying for it, not the city. Um, the area that's not included in the district is Portuguese Bend. And so we've been focused in the Portuguese Bend, but um, for the most part, that's we've been relying heavily on the, uh, the dewatering wells and it's gotten us by, but we knew back in 2017 that something needed, we needed to do something, some, uh, the groundwater we were, we were being told TV Drive South was sitting on wet soil and we needed to do something in the, in the Portuguese Bend area. And that's why we started with our project. The second question you had to do with, um, with the, the red tagging and the, the city is, look, I, we are actually internally looking at um, what we could do financially. Uh, it's very hard, but we're really trying to get the state and, and the federal government to get some financial assistance for those homeowners. What I'm trying to do is if your structure is red tagged and we ask you that you need to um, vacate the structure, we're gonna try to connect you with um, some of these accommodations locally. They're, they are gonna charge. We're gonna try to see if there's ways to get individuals assistance. Um, when I sp spoke to Kevin McGowan, um, and actually with LA County OEM yesterday, we're also gonna try to talk to the insurance commissioner to see what insurance could do in this case. I know it's hard, but we're gonna try to see um, if we can get some resources for residents that way. We're looking, we're trying to um, help everyone out on the short term. Uh, a question was asked at one of the council meetings, I think it was two meetings ago, is there a way we could, if we had to, move out of our structures because of the structural stress. Could we bring a, a manufactured home? Could we bring a temporary structure? We're putting a program together that we're gonna enter an urgency ordinance for the council's consideration. I believe it's right now scheduled for September 3rd um, so that you, you may be able to do that. Now, the, the hook to all of that is, yeah, you, you could bring a manufactured structure in on something on wheels, but if you don't have gas and you don't have power, that that's so so. And and Sue, so, yeah, and so I'm actually, we're actually also looking at. I, I should just bring this up. Some people have asked me. I know Claudia, you've asked me. Can I? Um, some of us had septic systems. Can we? Can we bring out and reuse our septic systems? No. Uh, and let me tell let me tell you why. Um, there there was a lawsuit. That, and there was a settlement in 19 in the 80s, the Haran lawsuit, that said those those septic tanks need to be removed because they're contributing to the landslide. LA County Health Department will not shake your heads. Millions of dollars were put out for that. That was one of the settlements. So the eight, LA County Health Department is involved in that. And, and I'm just telling you what it is. They're not going to allow. The uh, next question is, I know on the east side of, uh, of, of Pepper Tree in that area, they have holding tanks. We're looking at seeing if that's going to be something that could be um, allowed on the west side of the, the community association. So that's sort of uh, the answer there. Mike, you were next with questions. A lot of resources. They're actually very, they service up for many, many years. And you know, we do appreciate that. We appreciate them very, very much. But what I don't understand is, what I don't understand about the utility company versus something like, you know, I mean, their, their products are volatile. I mean, they could damage us, but also water is, is can damage us. And yet Alclad has no resources whatsoever. Our discharge lines are archaic. They're crumbling, and we have breaks exactly where a gas company has them, exactly. And they go out every week to fix it, every week. 
when Alclad has a job to fix, we go out and fix it. And we do, use standard practices to fix it. And then we turn back on our wells and it blows right in our face. And okay, so what we do is we continue to keep on, we don't even leave. We fix that job. We fix that job in order to get our wells back on. Okay, and so let me tell you exactly what they had. Hunters leaking, you know, seven, eight times every week. We had a break six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. It kept on breaking and we, we finally have got it fixed. It might look like a scarecrow, but the thing is it works. And I cannot understand how we cannot provide services and design pipes that are resilient enough to, to accept this land movement. We do this on the seat of our pants, sitting in dirt, you know, and, design, and running to Home Depot and getting our parts. And we, that's how we keep this, this, these wells running, okay? If we had the, the resources that they had, we wouldn't be having this landslide. We would, you know, we, we work so hard at Alclad, and let me tell you something, we would never leave our job unless that job was fixed and make sure our neighbors are safe. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go, Marion. I'll come to you. Sherry, I'll, I'm going to go, Marion, the gentleman with green shirt, then you. Hi. I keep looking this way, and I'm going to look. Marianne Hunter, I'm on Cinnamon Lane in Rancho Paus in the Portuguese Bend area. Uh, I promised I would say this before I said anything else. I want to thank um, all of the volunteers in Portuguese Bend who work so hard and so diligently without pay and show up and fix things in good spirit. And um, I can't say enough for our uh, ACLAD and our board members and our neighbors who take care of us and uh, sometimes take a lot of abuse for it, but they have done a fantastic job. So thank you all very much. I'd also like to say, um, as a community, uh, we are pulling together and um, I'm seeing it a little bit fragmented. There's a group of Port for Portuguese band on next door. Uh, no, excuse me, on Facebook, there's a Portuguese band group for uh, information. And today there was a group on uh, texting, just 16 of us. Um, and then we had a, a community meeting a couple of nights ago. All of this is wonderful, but it's fragmented. And uh, one of our neighbors is trying to create a consolidation system. I would like the city also to help us. The most that we need as, as citizens is information. And you know, we're hearing uh, this company's got a good water heater, go to propane, but if you go to propane, that natural gas water heaters most likely cannot be converted to propane. So that we're losing time on fixing things because we don't have all the information we need. So I would like a place uh, to gather information about uh, resources and rebates and contractors and all that so that we can all be using the same information that we're getting. Thank you very much. No, and, and you, you mentioned that in that message you sent to me and, and we will try, we'll work. A, I think I, I communicate with Kent and Claudia whenever I need to get a message out to the P, PBCA and they do a great job. So we will, we will create a resource center. We'll work with the, the community association to set up a room where we can get all the contractors in to help everybody out. Um, talk to the, Anyone who's considering propane, go to the building department. They can help you. You're right. Some of the natural gas conversions don't work. Um, so you need to make sure that appliance works. You may, what you may want to do is find, find out what your appliance is, your stove, your oven, your water heater. Look up the manual. It should describe whether it could be converted to propane. Yeah. We'll get you the mic. And then the gentleman in the green shirt. I think it would be great if uh, we had a means of consolidating our um, orders for help. Um, like there's a, I got a guy from Ream to come to the, he's here somewhere, 
that is doing these really great water heaters. Well, they're very expensive. But if we bought 10, if 10 people got together and ordered these things, I'm wanting his company to give us a discount. If we get 10 people to order solar, uh, can we put yeah. pressure on them to, to give us better oh, deals? Okay. Thank okay. you. I'm being asked to take a five minute break because we're we're taping this so that we can post it on the city's website. Um, five minutes, we have another hour and then we'll come back, okay?
They got pasta? Where did they get that from? Okay, we're going to get started. I need everyone to take their seats. We have many more questions to ask. Okay, are you here to are you here to get information or talk? Everyone get your take your seat. Okay, where is the gentleman in the green shirt? We're getting started. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're starting. I'm ready for the next question. Dan, where's your, where's Dan Trotner? I got two. Dan. Okay, Carol, come on up, ask your question. Okay, now I'm, I'm talk show. Hey, everybody. My name is Carol Clasby. I am a 10 years resident in Portuguese Bend, and I'm glad we're here to get some answers to our questions. Uh, mine is for SCE, probably. Um, so I'm I'm looking for some clarity on this potential shutdown, and I I don't quite understand how it could occur, how it might be brought about because you talked about, you know, first the troubleshooters come out, uh, and then you know they escalate it to a certain point, and if they decided it wasn't safe, then they would not restore service to whoever happens to be along that line is my understanding. But I think all of us here kind of have this fear of SCE just saying, we're shutting you off, we're just not maintaining anymore ever. And so that's, I'm just looking for clarity on that. Is the only way our electric would be shut down if would be if some incident happened that SCE determined was not repairable? Or is there something else afoot that they might just say, yeah, we're not doing this area anymore, too costly. So I'm, I'm looking for that. What's, what's about safety and what's about cost? And how could, this, how could this possibly happen? What are the avenues toward any kind of shutoff? I, I'm glad you asked that question. It it could come a multitude of ways. It could come through a repair issue. It also could come if we see conditions in the field that would require us to decide if it was safe to continue to serve. I want to reiterate, we reached this point with safety. Safety, our number one priority is safety. If it is not safe to continue to serve, we are not able to continue to serve. This is safety of you as residents, safety is of our crew. We want our crew members to go home to their families every night. And if a condition arises where we're not able to guarantee that to them, we owe it to them to stop the work until we re-examine and decide if we're able to continue to safely serve. I know that there are some safety issues with electricity, but 
the whole United States is on electricity and things happen. So what would, I, I can't imagine because I'm not an expert, what kind of situation could arise to the level of being unsafe? I know you talked about the poles and the, and the dip, but I'm having a hard time understanding how electricity is so unsafe that there's some kind of concern that you can't sustain our service. I, I'm looking for also, some real it answers. It has to move the infrastructure. Our grid is designed to be on solid ground. Our infrastructure is moving at a rapid rate with your land movement. That is what's creating the dynamic situation. Our infrastructure is moving, creating just Monday a flash event that was originally reported as a fire. Rancho Palos Verdes is a high wildfire risk area. In normal conditions, not landslide conditions, you are at risk for flash events and fires during wildfire season. That is escalated because of the land movement pulling wires, having poles snap. This is what we are dealing with on a extremely rapid rate from what we even saw in previous years in your community. So at some point you stopped I, I, I really, I understand what you're saying. I really do. And I wish I had an answer. I won't, we won't know until we see the dynamic conditions and the entire community is not the same. And I, I respect that what you're trying to get at and I'm not able to uniformly answer that tonight. I am telling you, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This website, we will do updates. If anything changes, I, Ara, we speak daily, two, three times daily on some days. We are doing everything. We are in touch with other utility partners who rely on our electricity to make sure we're informed of their critical services that they need. We are doing our due diligence to make sure we have the information we need. I don't have an answer for you as to how exactly it will play out because it's dynamic and it's moving. How it could play out, yes. How it could potentially play out, yes. And I, I appreciate that you asked and I, I apologize that I can't speak to exactly how it could or would play out. I mentioned at the beginning that uh, starting tomorrow, we, um, through LA County Office of Emergency Management, there are gonna be meetings with all the utility companies, all the different branches of government. We are gonna meet every Tuesday and Thursday. You just go through me, reach out to me and I will get you, I, I will, I'm here for you. You just need to, you tell me and I will, I will try to get answers. Um, gentlemen in the, in the green, you're next. Hi there, this is for SCE, SCE as well, so we might as well. Up on back. And your, and your name is? Uh, Mike Anderson, 9 Fruit Tree Road in Portuguese okay. Bend. Been there about 12 years. Um, so we know we're going to have an outage. You pretty much said we're going to have an outage. If we do what R said and create a redundant or a resilient infrastructure, we're going to have an outage regardless. Since you know that is coming, we all should know it's coming. What's your plan on prescriptive guidance for us to hook up generators, to get generators, to get the bridge over whatever is two weeks, three weeks, or whatever it's going to take in our segment or whatever it is. Do you have any plans for that? You sell them, but are you, since you, well, you, they're on your website, actually. Or at least you you have them listed and you have a rebate there for, for some. But since you see this coming, what's your plan to help this community out? You would live in an earthquake zone. I, I don't believe we don't have the, the infrastructure, the technology to make this work. You know we do. What's your plan for that? Let me answer that because I, I, I think the questions regarding all these alternate um, sources of energy fuel should really be directed to the building and safety department. We are prepared to answer those questions. My understanding, it is very expensive to buy a generator just in itself for the entire house and then to fuel it, whether it's diesel, 
it is very it's thousands and thousands i i heard a generator a massive generator not the ones you buy at, at costco or something it, it could be upwards of twenty twenty five thousand dollars and that's what i heard so anyone who has more information these are the big ones so so the other the other thing is the generators that you buy that you can get off the shelf or so those are really just to get you by for like charging your phone for your refrigerator. refrigerator talk to the building official if you have if anybody has um specs or, or companies let us know and we will start to put that information together so you can call those those folks about those generators the other thing is a, a point of clarification i'd like from the fire department if they're still here i think there's some misinformation when you say that the fire department is you know put us on notice maybe if you could clarify what that means for a contract city versus a normal city of la or whatever it's not like they're divorcing us no so please clarify yes. that for everybody who hasn't heard that. i i will say that you can you can i know um he and i communicated the the la county fire department is not leaving they are not um it's saying that they're not going to serve you. They will serve you. They will respond to the emergent calls. They are committed to serving the entire city of Rancho Palos Verdes, landslide or no landslide. What they were putting us on notice is that certain areas, they may not get there in the required six minutes uh, that's required for response times. What, we'll, what we're going to figure out is we need, to, we need to notify you residents that are in an area they can't get to in the six minutes so that you are aware there is an emergent call. It may take longer than six minutes to get to you. That is part of the inspection. Um, the fire department did, um, they did their inspection of the area in terms of response times. We got, we have that information. We'll relay that to the community so that you know if you are in, a, in an area that's, um, that they can't meet that six minute time frame. But they will, they will respond. They will come out to you. They are not divorcing from the city. I, I know Sherry, you've got your hand up and then ma'am, I'll go to you. And then I'll go over there. Okay. So I, I went down to Global Con to buy some containers today. And if I bought in bulk, I got a lot more. It's kind of related to what Marianne was what, saying. What, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you I went to uh, purchase containers. And this may apply to anybody that's going to need like a yurt or a, a little mini housing or something like that. Is, can the city help us form any sort of buy groups so that we could, could buy these in a reduced rate? Um, you know, can you work with us to get a bulk buying if, if we buy here or there? I, I realize you've got conflicts of interest. You yeah, can't do that. Yeah. But can, can you, Let, how can you help us? Explain? So someone else, someone else said that, um, I, was it, I don't know Marianne. if you said it over here. It was Marion. Um, let me see what we can do. Maybe we can work with the PBCA because the city can't, make sure. recommendations, but maybe we could help uh, create um, a, a repository of information that we can, that you guys can start uh, putting out for the or, I think a, a lot of you, what I'm hearing, people are saying, I have this contact. There's a guy here from one company. You know, if I, if I yeah, you, I, I think that's something that is absolutely, I think there, there's a lot of value in that. Let's see what the city can do um, to help out with that. Um, I, I, I went, to, I said the ma'am over there and then, yeah, no. Hi, I'm, I'm Corrine, um, at the very west side of Seaview, on Admirable, and I've had the pleasure of also being part of the Flying Triangle landslide, the 70s, 80s, and 90s, so that's what I made here. Um, every, every notification I get says that Rolling Hills will not participate. And they are a big contributor to this with all of their septics and their new 20,000 square foot house that's planned on Press Road. Um, what are we doing about trying to get them on board as well? We, we have been pushing very hard. There's, only, there's so they, much- They tried to, yeah, they tried keep, to disenfranchise us in the flying We train. can keep sending them letters. It's, it's, you know, and we have been asking them to come to the table uh, put all the lawyers aside, just come to the table. We want to work holistically. I know Mayor Cruikshank has been talking to their council. We are asking them, let's study this holistically. 
But and then that said on Saturday, Charlie, uh, someone said they know. Yeah. So he uh, and, and I've been in part of his email exchange. He said he will. If the residents are kind of grouping together and doing some stuff. Will you connect? I said we'll work with you. Connect, connect with me. So we are committed to doing that. I need KCLAD. Um, we'll work with them as well because it is part of a landslide abatement district. We just lent them. We agreed to lend them one almost one point nine million dollars from the city to them. If you didn't know, the city council two meetings ago approved a loan for one point nine million dollars to KCLAD um, at a low. It's a loan. It's two a two uh, with a two percent two percent interest two point five percent interest for. And then we we lent uh, we agreed to lend AgClad, I believe one point six million dollars. So so that money is ready, but there's some provisions to it that they have to check certain boxes that make sure that we're just not giving them money on and they're not engineering. Both those districts need ge geologists. They need a geotechnical engineer. They need professionals to give them advice. If they don't have it, we're willing to help them out. We just need to know. Um, I, I who did I promise the question over? Oh. Uh, Tasha Hinchliff. Yes. Tasha Hinchliff down in the Portuguese Bend Beach Club on Spindrift Drive. Um, I actually have uh, one comment or suggestion um, as a follow up to what you were just talking about, and one separate question, if I may. Um, the comment is that we've been talking about down at PBC. Uh, the possibility of collectively putting together ideas of contractors who could be helpful for each other. We've got a group email that's been going amongst about a 20, 20 of our residents um, for suggestions, you know, talk to this one or this solution, et cetera. If we can do that with tapping into one of my realtor colleagues up in Rolling Hills that you just alluded to, and um, with people in Rolling Hills um, who have been dealing with the Flying Triangle for many, many years, with people in the active part of Upper Portuguese Bend who have been dealing with active landslide for many, many years, God bless you. And with those of us at PBC and up in Seaview who, God forbid, have been dealing with cow water. Um, if we can put together a collective, both resources for group buying, as well as here's what we've been finding out is useful or not useful. Many of us were going down what we didn't think were rabbit holes and found out there were rabbit holes because it wasn't going to be useful because of the bedrock, you know, 30 feet down or however far. So that's just my suggestion. Can we please bring all of that together? Even if the city of Rolling Hills won't take responsibility for everything, they're literally dumping yes. and coming and, down. And one of the comments I made at the very beginning is we're putting together an, uh, a, a resource center here where we would uh, disseminate information on resources and then have another room set up where we could bring all the contractors that people could, almost like a job fair, but a contract fair. No, I, so. I heard that part, but a lot of us, um, as residents have alluded to tonight, need to buy things now, need to talk okay. to engineers and contractors now. Okay. And Let me see what we can do <laughs> the next few days. Um, I, I, okay. Awesome. That, that would be great. So that just across all of that would be helpful. The question on a separate subject is the city's plan has always been, let's do the boreholes, let's see what the testing results come back, and then let's go with the hydrogers and see if it's effective. Um, there are quite a few of us who are getting a little worried that we need to be thinking about plan B. Um, and uh, so the question is, could we not start the hydrogers getting the water out of the ground while we're still waiting for the borehole test results and try and slow down this damn fast moving slide. And then if the borehole studies show that that would not be effective, at least we have tried to slow down and get some more of the water out of the ground and then move on to plan B. We just feel like we're losing time here. We, we, we can't. It, each hydrogger costs more than $5 million. And we and if we go based on assumptions, that's we that hydrogger can shear off in one day. We were we were moving forward to put the hydroggers in a couple months ago, and we said we need to stop and make sure we're gonna spend 
your dollars, $10 million on two hydro augers and make sure it doesn't shear off and it yields the water. We were really, based on the data that we've collected, we needed to get on the seaward side. We needed the per PVC's permission. They gave it to us. We're getting that information. There was a point, we're going to be honest here, that we thought plan B was going to have to kick in. Plan B is not hydrogers doing dewatering wells, doing something different. We are now at a point, we're going to say that the data is saying there is artesian pressure there. We need to figure out the optimal location to put that hydrogger in there. Should have that information in a, probably in the next three to four weeks, um, maybe a little longer. We're going to, we're, we may need to get this, to make this work, we may need access easements from property owners because those hydrogger drains are going to go under people's properties. It takes one person to hold back on that agreement and we can't do it. So we need, this is where we're, the community needs to come together and say, we need to get that water out of there. The other thing is, as we're doing the test scores, it, it, we, we're checking with the team there's supposed to be a way that they can start to pull out some water when those test bores are drilled. Um, we're working with them to see if that can happen, at least to just get into whatever water they're reaching. So I don't know, Ramsey, if you have anything else to add to that. The thing that I'd add is that if we did that, we may erroneously conclude that the hydrogers don't work. And the reason is that the geology underground varies. The geology underground varies by location. So we may install them in a location which is not conducive to extracting the water. And there could be another location not too far away that is. So we don't wanna make that false conclusion, install them, they don't work. And in this particular case, we may have targeted the wrong depth. I know it takes a really long time. We're trying to do it as fast as we can, but I can't stress how important it is for us to understand exactly what's happening through these four holes. Thank you for explaining that. The, up, the uplifting. Yeah, that's why it was critical. In fact, we we were supposed to do another test bore on the landward side, and we said, we already have enough data. We need to get on the ocean side. And so we stopped short on the landward side and then got on the seaward side, and we're, we're doing the test bore. So um, I know, Jim Knight, you had your hand up, and then Gordon, yeah. and then Cassie. Wait, wait till the mic comes to you. Yes, the uh, gas company had a plan for two inch main line to come from Peabody Drive South to service our community. The gas company had a plan for a two inch main line to come from Peabody Drive South up to our community, but they put it on the newly acquired uh, conservancy land that's on, bought from Jim York. They approached Jim York for an easement for that, but he said, I don't own it anymore. Have they approached you for that easement to get that new main line in? No. So um, I, I will I will look into that uh, over the, the, the preserved property the city acquired. Okay. Please send it to me tonight. Um, Cassie, do you want to go in there, Gordon? I'm Kathy Jones. I live on Cinnamon Lane in Rancho Palos Verdes for about 26 years. And I tend to go to the dark side first and climb my way out. Yeah, but um, 10, 15 years ago, we participated in a lawsuit about safety, trying to keep building and, and, and potentially losing their homes. Um, my big emphasis at that point was that our homes may be safe, but we have to travel through two zones, zone five and zone six, that have never been safe. They're not safe. I worry about the roads and specifically if we're gonna lose the drive. I can all if, if everything stopped today, we fix it's not gonna stop. I, and I'm worried that two, I own two homes up in there. I, I could get a horse and ride to work, but I don't know how my clients are gonna get there. I'm I'm worried about the ski jump area. It seems like it's all slipping out and sinking. It's coming out. Um, I, I just kind of need to know if I should bail. I don't know. And, and it, it, the homes, we can fix them. We can do all that. 
gas, electric, solar, whatever you want, but you can't get to your house. And I'm like, what's the point? This the city the is Palos Verdes Drive South is a major arterial roadway. It serves 15,000 uh, trips a day. We are committed to keeping it open. I was I learned on Monday that if that road were to be closed, that would result in a, a mandatory evacuation because you can't get to um, the properties unless we had uh, access into so so we are we are committed yes the ski jump is dropping we we're seeing both a vertical and horizontal it, it we we pave it a few days later the fissure it, I, we were just driving the road this week and I called Ramsey I'm like there are divots all over the place and it's opening up we just we just it's the nature of what's going on we are the city is committed to keeping that road open um but it, it is it is actively moving, especially at the ski jump. You've got the two two different um, uh, play. I, I don't want to even say that we're committed to keeping it open, and we're trying to flat. We keep we were we were, the council was looking at some geofoam engineering to kind of flat, but it was going to cost way too much. We said we just need to keep doing what we're doing to keep that that gradient as. It's about 25% gradient right now. Um, you'll see the signs. We are strictly prohibiting trucks. The trucks keep getting by. I'm, I'm going to look over in the back with all my law enforcement friends back there. Please, please, please tell those trucks to turn around. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Gordon, I think you were, you were next. Okay, Mike, I see your hand. Going a little bit different Gordon, direction. Gordon, then Mike, child. As a as a property owner, I don't have the right to drain my lot onto my neighbor's lot downhill. Do the neighborhoods above us, rolling hills above us, have the legal right to drain their communities down into ours? So I. I will. I will have to look into that. I don't have the answer. Can we get an answer to that? Uh, we will try. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mike Childs was next. All, all, all the way over there with the, Mike Stand. Oh, Ben. I told. I told Ben he would go next. So, I feel like a historian. Uh, I can answer Gordon's questions. I heard Earl and Childers speak. Up, you guys have. To I, I feel up. like an historian. Uh, Gordon's question can be asked by Carol Lynch, our city attorney. She told us probably 30 times in city council meetings that they have a legal right to drain to Galveston Canyon. But I want to remind the city that you guys want to flex your muscles and shut somebody, someone's power off in our community. And all it did was he got a generator and started a fire. Okay? So that's something really to be aware of. And the other thing is, I don't know how you're going to go through our community and, 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 and you know, and, and look at our homes and say what's good and what's bad because we had a landslide in 1965. We had a landslide in 1974. And now we still have five homes from the first landslide that people have lived in for over 50 years and they are completely red taggable. We have three homes now in those 1974 homes that were completely red taggable and they've lived there for 40 years. So I don't, I mean, and you guys have never pulled this on us before. And so what are you gonna do? When someone's lived in their house in, in with a 48 degree angle, you know, you're gonna say, you gotta get out now, but now that you're 87 years old, why well, they've lived there their other whole lives and it's and it's the same condition. It's just, I mean, it's ludicrous. You know, you sh this should be on a voluntary basis. We should be asking the city to come help us for people who need help. And otherwise, we'll take care of ourselves like we always have been. That, that's a very good point. We, no one wants to kick anybody out of their homes. 
Okay, Mike. Um, but but you know what? If something were to happen, Monday was a 4.9 earthquake in Barstow. Um, if something were to happen, and that 87 year old is is injured or dies in that because of the, how are we gonna how? Do, but not it would not if a, ma a major earthquake were to hit. But that that's that my point is if a structure is not safe, we need to put them on notice. We're not gonna go we're not gonna go kick them out. So Um, who, who wants, who wants, to, let's go Shaw in the back and then the gentleman in the white hat, which I think is that you, yeah. Oh, I know I keep looking this way. Okay, we'll go, we'll go Shaw and then Ben and then the gentleman. He's had his hand up for an hour. We appreciate that the city is looking out for the citizens, but under what law can the government enter people's properties, people who have not committed crimes, and there is no exigent or emergency it's, situation. It, it's getting an inspection warrant from the courts based on the California building. Do you know the code? No. I, I, I know enough to say that. I don't know the code site, and I know the municipal code. Uh, the city is pretty well. Well, if you if you see it otherwise, you can contest that um, that that inspection warrant. On the corner, I mean, on Dauntless and Exultant, obviously we know what's happening right there. Is there any? Are we gonna try to fix that before winter? I mean, or are we people just gonna fall into the? It, 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 it's dropping on a daily basis. What we need to be prepared for is if winter comes, it. We could we could pay that whole intersection once this landslide is stabilized is going to have to be redesigned, re-engineered, retaining walls. This is this what what's happening today is is going to permanently scar that intersection on how we we design it. So um, we right now and there's grobbins that are forming now on exultant and admirable. We're seeing that that wasn't there four months ago. There's dips. We've got to be prepared to get that water out of there. Otherwise, we've got pools of water collecting. I know, Ben, you, you are next. Uh, my name's Ben Zask, uh, 96 North Pacific Drive. Uh, LA County, French Road Boulevard extension, started to slide over here. The Paintbrush Canyon, Portuguese Canyon, cut off. All the water's going into. Landslide and this section of the beach flat out, having the hydraulic space. And LSL allows rolling bills and rolling structures that the water goes into those canyons, going through the head of this slide. And let's say, no, we did have septic tanks in this area, but they don't think they're going to be flat. I understood. Yeah. Understood. You made your statement. Yeah, I mean, so Leon said um, you've never seen anything like that. <laughs> yeah. If you know, since you try to go there, you'll end up at problems. Then they'll be 60 foot drop, and that's why they don't get there. But I'll win the same thing as they drop. Whole house of moon was getting on 4,400 feet because we accelerating just like everybody else. But, uh, can I get your attention? So, I don't know if you heard me. Our property is over, over 300, getting on 400 feet. 
One of our goals was to place household in 2019. And it the other one that I'm sorry you dropped it around it last week, it's talking. That also has a metal plate of 55. That is the 1955. And it's one of the gas stoves. We have never had a gas And we've moved close to 400 feet. So um, we were not doing anything because we don't know, well, should we go electric? We don't know what the electric function goes. <laughs> Uh, it's still done. The gas company, I don't know, you say paying your safety issue. 400 feet, the Sanchez gas slide has been moving to Sanchez Six. And as far as Erickson goes, um, the pole, the Sanchez Six is still there. And, and the mic. Marianne Shriver, 21 Pomegranate Road in Portuguese Bend. And um, I'm hearing that we need to prepare, that just prepare for the worst, okay? Just in case Edison leaves, which I see that is pretty critical since we're on that sewer system. And if we can't go back to septic, I guess we'll need some kind of new plan. I have heard now that there are things called holding tanks and getting sucked out on a regular basis and all that. No fun, but my concern, like the city's concern, is that we would spend a ton of money. It's already just adding up like mad since we have to replace our systems with uh, the gas company pulling out. I, I don't want to, I kind of want to get off the grid now because I would like to stay in my house and in my neighborhood but I don't want to spend a ton of money and then be told along the way that really it wasn't ever really going to work. You know, that we, I would like someone to, I know I kind of blurted it out, but rip off the Band-Aid. I don't want to just spend a lot of money, effort, time. I heard at one point LA County wasn't allowing people to be off the grid in certain ways. So I want some transparency and honesty and some some answers as to whether we're sort of spinning our wheels. That's a good. I I don't ha I don't have an answer to that. I, it, the I think many people are looking at alternative ways, and I strongly suggest talking to the building department. They are preparing. They have information to share with you on what what's specific to your property, they can come out and they could say this. I think once we get that resource center and we bring these, these contractors here that people can talk to, what does it take to go on solar? Um, solar is not as easy as, as propane, uh, but even propane, those conversions don't necessarily work on all appliances. You need to know whether your appliances, um, ultimately those are decisions you need. I, I would say for me, I would be looking First, is my structure being compromised? Yeah, if if because some structures are not experiencing any damage. I know Guri's been saying that, and it's riding with the land. Not the visuals aren't going through it, um, but you're you're feeling the consequences. All then you got to then say, okay, could I do this? Could I could I do the conversions? How do I do the power? Um, and and see what those all work. I see flyers out in the audience of generators. And stuff like that. So people are collecting information. We need to share that information so that everyone has has this can make informed decisions. I, the gentleman in the white cap has had an answer. Okay. okay. They're asking me to get back to the. Um, no, no, sir. Come on. I, I, I've been. You've been for an hour with your hand up, like Ben, and then I'll get to. Hi, my name is uh, Mark Young. I live at 4364 Admirable Drive. Um, I've worked in the insurance industry for over 30 years, 
I started my career after Ohio State working the Northridge earthquake. And I also worked Hurricane Katrina. And I have a really short story. Uh, when I was a disaster adjuster and working Hurricane Katrina, we had a choice to help individuals or corporations with disaster recovery, rebuilding, that type of thing, helping them with their claims. And we made a decision as a company to help individuals. And I'm asking Edison to step up and use their all hazard plan that was formed in November, 2022 and set up an incident command center and have presence in our neighborhood all the time like Cal Water does. And Cal Water responds immediately. We can't wait 45 minutes or an hour on an Edison response when you could set up a mobile command center here and respond to this neighborhood. And that's something that is very easy for Edison to do. I've worked with Edison for a long time on a lot of their different power plants, and I understand their disaster planning and their mitigation plan. And I'm asking Edison to set up a command center and to be able to respond in a much better manner than we've gotten in the past. I'd like to um, I'd like to share with the group that's actually something that I did bring up to the city manager. We do very much believe that there is an incident management team that we have at Edison. We asked the city Monday if they plan on standing up an EOC. I am personally FEMA trained. Many people at Edison are trained in our incident management team. And I did ask Ara just Monday, have we reached the point where we need to change from the current lens that it's in? and move this into an emergency situation, in which case, if he did, we would immediately stand up that. So yes, we did ask that just Monday in that setting. I'm glad you asked that question. And we do, we did, we activated the EOC back in October. We, we, when we declared a local emergency, we activated our EOC. We are operating under an emergency, we say, we are always saying we are in a state of emergency. If we need to put up a command center, we can do that. We can certainly do that in light of all this information that's coming. Well, it, what I heard from you is you would like Edison, what I'm hearing from others, is to have a 24 hour presence in your neighborhoods like Cal Water. That's very different than uh, a, an incident command center. I think you're looking for something similar to Cal Water, where, where if there's there's a break, they respond to it in five minutes. Um, yes, so we will put that request to Cal Water. So I, I'm I'm. Well, I think I think Selena heard us, so we will follow up with that request. That we will follow up that they do because Cal Water. When they came to the council, we said, we need you to be out there because we were getting so many breaks. They started, they they had people stationed there. In fact, they said to us, they were so spread thin because their, their crew was going from one neighborhood to another. They ended up having, to, I think at one point, uh, Nikki and Eva came to the council meeting and said, you need to give, they need more people on the team. But let me, let me get to some of the questions that people online are asking because they're getting um, anxious. Being told we have 10 minutes till nine o'clock. I'm willing to stay longer if you want to stay longer, but yeah, on Monday, right? Yes. Um, so there, there was a question from Steve Hinchcliffe um, who was asking that, what is the latest land move data? It's it, for the, in general, it's moving about 13 inches, 12 to 13 inches a week in most areas. Um, are the hydrographers working yet? I answered that no. And when can we begin pumping water? We're hoping probably in September is our goal, um, if as in, if not sooner. Is SDE going to shut off service to the PVCA? Um, we talked about that. At this point, we don't have an answer, but everyone know, is now thinking we need to be prepared for that, because I know the city is as well. Um, why did SDE send a notice saying power may be shut off to our home, including the areas not in the landslide? And that is because the entire neighborhood is in 
same circuit, including the Beach Club and Seacliff Hills. I mentioned that already. With substantial increase of land movement uh, without any recent rain, is it possible that there is a flow of water like an underground river? There is underground water. It's the groundwater, it's the artesian pressure that is uh, lubricated the bent tonight and causing all this movement. We've been saying that all along here. Um, I'm just gonna go quickly through here. What it, what is what part of Seaview neighborhood? We've already answered that question. Has the city considered that if SE cuts service, many residents will be resorting to use using portable generators? With a number of generators, it will be obviously safety, environmental concerns. AQMD is going to have a concern if all these generators are starting to uh, operate. We're trying to get in touch with them. I strongly, strongly suggest you get a permit work with the building official and the building department so that you make sure it's all free. We're not charging you and it's being issued immediately like over the counter, but we want to make sure whatever you install, you're doing it safely. Please work with the building department. I'm going to, I'm going to skip over. What is Senator Ted Lieu and other government officials doing to help this? I, I spoke about um, the, 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 uh, Congressman Liu has co-authored an amendment to Stafford Act. I have a concern with that. I've talked about what Sen uh, mm. Senator Allen's doing with SB 1461. We're putting a lot of pressure on our electeds to have Cal OES think outside the box. We need help. We're under a crisis. We are in constant communication with our county, state, and federal representatives. And I mean it. We are talking to them. But they need to hear from you as well. They need to hear from you as well. I'm going to continue. If one circuit feeds Seaview, then why are we being told that only, only those of us on one side of Schooner being affected about, I've already talked about that, and SCE is working to try to slice that grid, but right now it's only one, um, one circuit serving those entire, that entire area. Uh, what is SC, S, Southern California Gas doing to reinstate gas service to Portuguese Bend? At this point, it doesn't seem like they're waiting till the land, what I've heard is until the land is stabilized, they're not going to be looking at alternatives. If I'm, I'm misspoke, you can correct me, Ben, but that is my understanding that they are not looking at bringing in a different route of pipes, but I understand that there is an easement somewhere. I'm gonna look into that. Jim York's gonna, uh, Jim Knight's gonna send me that information. I'll pass that on to Ben. <laughs> So my apologies. Um, just to clarify, so the I understand that you brought it up earlier, bringing in from a, a different feed, right? And just to just to clarify that, what we saw above ground is indicative of what is going on on the rest of the system, right? There is strain on the whole system, and so it's not as simple as just making a repair and being able to safely restore service to the community, right? So our integrity team is concerned about what's going on with the broader picture in PBCA, and so. Again, we're going to restore service as soon as we are able to uh, determine that the land is safe for us to do that. And so, but until we can make that determination, we we can't operate a safe gas system. And so in terms of bringing in from another way, the, the integrity team has has concerns with how the whole system in PBCA is. What I do is I call in and I say, okay, we've got a gas leak. It's the same gas leak every time. It's this stupid pipe that's in front of my house that has a bend in it that's supposed to be something that gives. I call up and they send somebody out. It takes an hour. He comes out and he goes, yeah, you've got a gas leak. I'll get somebody on this. And then sometime in the next few hours, a team comes out and do some kind of ridiculous fix on the same pipe. They have never uh, changed it, except they did make it worse because now the bend goes into the roadway, so it's conceivable that a car could hit it. So if what, Cal, if what the gas company is saying is that it, it is suddenly worried about safety, 
I've had gas leaks so bad it was blowing the shrubbery. I could see it from my house, you know, a hundred feet away. And it took hours to get that fixed. And it, like Tim said, if it, if it was imminent danger uh, with the big pipe by the Wayfarers Chapel, then you should have shut it down. And it's not, it's not leaking and that could be replaced. And all of the things that are a problem could be replaced and could be fixed if you had the will to do it. And while I've got the microphone, I have a very stupid question. Why can't we put tarps over the fissures? We, we've done that. Thank you. We, uh, ask ask um, Donnie right next to you about the tarps. Ask Shaw about the tarps. No, we've we've done it, but it's challenging too with the tarps because the wind blows them. Donnie will email me or text me in the middle of the night saying water's pooling, um, it's not draining properly. But 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 we've done that, and sometimes filling the fissures is the better. Um, just filling those fissures better than the tarps. I, I think you could still see some of the tarps if you drive PV drive south. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back. I think a lot of these questions are being answered have been answered already. So um, the property, so one of the things about property taxes, so um, Assessor Prang came to our council meeting uh, a few meetings ago, and he spoke, we have information on the city's website under land movement on how you can seek relief and um, request uh, assistance with your property taxes. So that is, he's aware, I've been, Assessor Prang has been instrumental in from two years ago in helping uh, get some responses at various levels. Go to the city's website, that information's there. I know, ma'am, you've had your hand up patiently and then we'll go to over there and then we'll go to Colleen. Just a quick comment with regards to permits. On Monday, I did go to the city planning. They knew nothing about getting a permit somebody else was there trying to get a solar permit and they were told anybody in Portuguese Bend because we're in the landslide area that we cannot get a permit. So if that has not gotten corrected, I would ask. It, it has been corrected. Okay. Um, in fact, all permits are bypassing the planning review and the way we're doing it is we're, we're deeming this as temporary work. So you don't need to go through planning. You just go straight to building and safety. It is, uh, I, I, I received an email saying three people went in I got we it's been re responded to. Um, I know Colleen had a question, and then the the lady in the red over there is patient. I think you've already figured out that the people of Abalone Cove and Portuguese Bend are very resilient people. We're all sitting here trying to figure out how to go off. Yep. One of my questions is: I'm afraid to call Edison now. There's a tight wire. I called on a pole on Sweet Bay that's leaning over the road this week. And the guy came out and goes, well, you, what do you expect? You live in a landslide area. You know, there's poles leaning, there's tight wires, and I'm not calling anymore. I don't want anyone coming in my home to put a colored tag on it. You know, we're all trying to stay in our homes. We're resilient people, and we know how to do that. But this isn't helping. You know, I'm in the media. This isn't helping our cause. We, we need help getting to the place where if we have to go off the grid, that you're going to tell us that's okay. Because that's what most of the people here are doing. We're all figuring out about generators and propane tanks and solar energy. That's what we're doing right now. All of us. You know? I, I, I know that. I know enough of you but that, yeah. En enough said here. You know, we're afraid to ask for help now. We're afraid to call Southern California Edison when call, the crap hole in a leaning. Call city. the city. Everybody call the, don't, the squeak. I, I can't, Colleen and all of you don't. Don't be afraid to talk to your city. Call me, call the building official, come talk to us. We're here to try. We want to help you. We want to protect your homes. I have We're trying to get you. We, we can't hear number. you. I have an above the ground gas pipe that's taken eight weeks, eight weeks to go 35 feet on my fence. That's how hard they try. I mean, it's a subcontractor. They come at 930, they leave at 230 and they don't work Fridays. That's how hard you've been trying. You no, know, and, and I know I have all kinds of whatever leaks. I'm afraid to call you and say there's a sewer leak going down the road because I don't fix them. 
We're fixing them. Oh, I saw all the team. invoices. I saw all the invoices. I know how much we're paying for all this. My neighbors come to me and say, Colleen, can you call the water company? Now I'm afraid to do that, you know? I think you need to know how we feel about okay. that. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, 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 put the numbers on the gate. Red and and call. If you want to stand up, we'll, we'll get the mic. And then I know the gentleman over here looking directly at me. Quick question, quick question about the ski jump. Can we not close the road and make it for local traffic only somehow? No, it's a public road and we get public dollars for that. We cannot, um, we cannot close the road. Okay, then for SoCal, um, I have to be really honest. You saw the hands raised in this room about people that got the letter. No one got the letter. And they keep telling you to check the internet, check this, check that. Well, if I don't have power, my internet's not working. So... How about like we resort to old school? And as someone else pointed out, there are a lot of older people in the neighborhood who don't even go on the internet. So put it in my mailbox. I never got anything. Oh, this, that's great. Snail mail that tells me that my power is going to be out last Monday. That's really helpful. And when you call SoCal after five o'clock, there's no supervisors. There's nobody you can speak to. When you talk to the customer service representatives, half the time there's a dog barking in the background or a kid crying. I mean, the customer service is really abysmal. I think that if the power is going to go off, I want to know about it. And I want to know about it in advance so I can open my garage door, get my car out and go to work. I mean, I want to know about it. Now, if you have a fire or whatever, you've got people run up and down and knock on doors, do what you need to do. But we pay you guys money. I mean, I don't think it's right that we should be inconvenienced the way I know. I understand the land's moving. Great. Well, if we can't do telephone, if we can't do polls, and you can't bury it, I don't see a solution other than solar generators, whatever. I don't see any way that, you, that you're going to be able to fix this. But at least give us the common courtesy of putting a command center, like that gentleman said, so that you can respond to us in five minutes. Let us know what's going on. Put it in our mailboxes. I don't have internet if I don't have power. And the, the gentleman in the Thank you. The, the part of Seaview that's sustained the most damage and has been critically hit is this intersection we keep hearing about at Dauntless and Exultant. And earlier tonight, I heard one of the neighbors who lives right at that intersection explain that there's a pipe that's dripping. I think she said 50 was it 59 or 57,000 gallons of water 50 a day? Gallons. Yeah, this is right. I see 12 of my neighbors who live in the immediate area. I've heard a lot of uh, information about hydrographers were trying to find water, but in this one instance, I know a duck when it looks like a duck. I've been up on the hillside and I've seen it drip. I, Donnie, I think, measured it at 25 gallons a minute or something like that a while back. I, I, uh, I'm wondering uh, where we do know where seawater coming out of the hillside. In this one instance, right above the intersection or to the side of it, of Exalted and Dauntless, what has been done to address that pipe where we actually see it? Yeah, so, like a water so what, what they're referring to is the Klondike Canyon, the water that's coming from um, upstream in, in Rolling Hills. We've been working with the district, in fact, KCLAD put a pipe in, they put a flex pipe in. What we're trying to do, I think the residents in Rolling Hills are grouping together to put a pipe. They want us to connect to it. We said on Saturday, we said we would do that. We'll work with the district to do that. We've watched it drip since July of last year when the fissure was an inch wide. Now it's, now it's. Okay, I know Nikki, Nikki has a question. And I know we're at nine o'clock. I don't know what the, um, the the appetite here is. If you want to stay, we can. Thank you. So, our, uh my question is, um, you know, a lot of this that we are suffering from, let's face it, um, had to do with water getting into the subsurface. Um, Judge Pete talked about the water um, that is in, going into the canyon. Um, that has been for years, but there has also been significant water breaks. So we're talking over here about getting generators, putting solar, doing what we can to try to 
continuing to live in our homes, shoring up our homes. But quite frankly, in my opinion, people who cause this problem need to start coughing up some cash for us to be able to stay in our homes. I paid my taxes. I did what I needed to do. Those other people, they didn't do their job. So guess what? Now they ought to pay. And I want to see them. I want to see Cal Water sitting up here next to the other utilities. Just because they're fixing the pipes doesn't get their asses off the hook. Thank you. Any other any other questions? I know we're we're at nine o'clock. Um, got more hands. Lene, we'll go Lene, and then we'll come back here in the center. Pastor, if you want to grab, maybe you can grab the mic after. Lene Bilski, Seaview resident. Although not personally affected by this, I sympathize with all of the residents who are, and I echo all the comments they have made about the utility commission utilities and i agree totally with that and i want to thank ara for his endless efforts and long hours of putting in time on this because i know he's working very hard my question is about the elephant in the room i heard the septic tanks brought up earlier and i wanted to call attention to rolling hills because I've been attending the Wednesday landslide complex meetings on Zoom and either the representative is not there or if the representative from the city of Rolling Hills is there, has no definite detailed comments to make. So it was my understanding that people, the staff is not being allowed into the private residences in Rolling Hills to assess or do their technical measurements and so forth. If that is true, I wanted to know what the city's legal department has in mind to try and get their cooperation and to get some answers about the septic tanks and about the water. Gravity, water comes from the top. It's coming down from rolling hills. That's my question. Yeah, and, what legal issue can you bring up? Thank we, you. We are exploring. We are working Mayor Cruikshank is talking to their council. We are really trying to get everyone at the table. I said this earlier. We need to look at this landslide holistically. Um, landslides don't know bound jurisdictional boundaries, but we we need to be thinking in that same capacity. So, um, I know Tasha you had a question, and then we'll come over here as well. Yeah. I think it's on. I don't know. No, it looks like it turned off. Sounds like it's sorry. Quick follow up to what Nikki was saying, and um, but I'm not sure. Marianne, is that your name? Hi, was saying a gas company. I, I'm the one, one of the squeaky wheels down at PBC about Cal Water, and every time I call them, um, uh, even though I've got the after hour supervisor cell as well, or email, they still haven't been doing the repairs that we've been calling in, and we've got all sorts of areas where it's quite obvious that there's going to be a very, uh, a water leak quite soon. So just calling your attention to the fact that um, with each of the utilities, and I do appreciate Gas Company and Edison being here, thank you. You guys are taking a lot of heat, but we're living in homes where we've got problems. Um, uh, but we really need the city to work with the utilities um, to set up a, a manner for us to communicate and actually have response and accountability because there is an accountability. They're not following up on the stuff that we're calling in. Okay, and, and I should comment that Cal Water is moving aggressively on bringing all the pipes above ground in certain areas of the Beach Club, in the Seaview neighborhood, as well as in the Portuguese Bend neighborhood. Okay, I, I will I will point that out. Um, who, who wants to, on this side of the room, yeah. Wait, let's get you the mic. Um, I, I want to go back to the, I, she might have left. I want to go back to the woman that talked about being scared to call. I, I want to assure you guys that we need you to call when you see a wire down. We need to keep your communities safe. Wires down lead to catastrophic events if you don't call us when you see them. I understood her fear, but I want to implore all of you 
to put the safety of yourself and your neighbors first and call. A down wire is a call to 911. 911. If you see an emergency situation, you are in the landslide zone. That's a call to 911. And 911 calls Edison Dispatch immediately. Thank you. That that's important for people to know. Call 911 because they do dispatch um SCE. Gentlemen over here, we'll we'll answer a few more questions and then we'll call it a wrap here. Uh, good evening. Uh, one glib remark and two questions. Uh, first of all, you said there were 19,000 trips on PB Drive South. 15. 15,000. Can PB Drive North handle that as far as Rolling Hills is concerned? Maybe that'll bring them to the table. Uh, so the, the question is, can PB Drive North handle those trips? Um, I'm going to answer that anecdotally. Have you been on PB Drive uh, North at 8 a.m. on uh, Monday? Oh, yes. During school year? You might as well walk. Or three o'clock. Uh, but uh, without being a traffic engineer. But uh, I'm living on the uh, Conqueror Drive, the house I'm in. Uh, I have to put it up for sale in the next uh, three or four weeks, and I just want—I really am some sort of assurance that I'm not selling a problem to somebody else. So, so the question is: He lives at the end of Conqueror, and he's putting his house up for a uh, sale. I can't answer that question. Yeah, I, 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 I so many people have called me. A house was up for sale in the in the uh, community association, and, and someone was wanting to buy and calling us. Tell, I, I can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. You need to do your due diligence. You need to disclose mm -hmm. what you need to do. You need to work with your agent, and and make sure you do what you um, need to do. Yeah, no, I'm working with my realtor on that kind of thing. I was just thought of getting. Yeah, I work. think I think it behooves you to just get all the information, know what's going on, um, and be able to disclose that information. And uh, a possible silly question, just so you're not alone. And you may want to uh, speak closer to uh, the uh, For uh, SoCal Edison, it just occurred to me uh, that your timeline is basically in flux in terms of uh, breaking up the grid because the land's constantly moving. Um, and I'm sure the city wouldn't thank you for digging up roads and that kind of thing, but have uh, underground cables been considered? So I'd imagine that it might be a little bit more resilient, if I'm not mistaken. That probably... Oh, shame that. And that probably with the ground moving, I don't, I don't know. That may introduce another set of issues. So, um, two more. We're going to take two more questions. No, no, those two, the two hands over here. He's coming. He's coming. Died. Okay. All right. Swap it up. Hi. Claudia Janssen, um, Nine Fruit Tree Road in Portuguese Bend. Um, okay, you opened up the meeting talking about those magnets and importance of an evacuation plan, knowing your zones, et cetera. And we're all familiar with that from a fire standpoint. Since we're having a conversation about landslide tonight, do you specifically- We can't hear Really? Whoa, I thought I was so loud. Were you specifically referring to knowing your evacuation zones in terms of a landslide evacuation emergency? Yes. Okay. And in, you, in, in every in any incident, what I said, you need to be prepared. You need to know your zone. Landslide, earthquake, explosion. Okay. I said all those things. You, yes. you mentioned specifically that we would be evacuated if, if PV drive shut down. Yes. But are there, do you, based on, I, I'm just wondering if you know something that we don't know no. about a catastrophic. No, I, I can answer that question. Movement that yes. would require an urgent evacuation. That, that question has been asked by the public numerous times at the city council meetings. I know. And, and our what's very different with this landslide uh, to other landslides, like what you saw on uh, Pear Tree Lane in Rolling Hills Estates, that was a sudden shift of land. It moved and it stopped. Yeah, it's not moved. Ours is a fast but oh, slow know. moving landslide. The geologist has said we do not anticipate a catastrophic. Yes, uh, I'm I'm familiar and I've been okay. following along. But because you talked about it right at the beginning, I questioned whether there was new information about land movement that there's, I was not familiar. There's with. there's no new movement, uh, new information on land movement other than it is moving about 13 inches a week. Got what it. we've been saying, all that's public information on the city's website. I'm okay. stressing that if there is an incident, I don't know. I'm just trying to. Everyone needs to know their zone. Yes. 
Um, another quick question about the permits. I was familiar with the over-the-counter permits. Are it, it for is is it for all like propane generators, unit solar, whatever we're looking for? Yes. Same day. Yes. Okay. Yes. Solar may be a little bit. Yes. It may need a, a little bit more time because you need to have your engineering. The city is prepared. You bypass planning. You go to a building and safety. We're prepared. If there's something that you're missing, we may send you back and say, come back and get this information. We just want to work and get you those permits ASAP. Okay, sorry. And last quick, I don't want to hog the mic, but all talking about how we can live off the grid. Kathy was just also having the same question I did. There still remains this question about sewage. And um, as far as I know, it wasn't fully an answered unless I missed it. So... I would be curious so, if there's an answer to sewage. So the, if you live in the um, in the Portuguese Bend community, you need power for the, for the sewer system. We're equally, as a customer, we're equally concerned about a power outage. We are working on seeing how we can get generators and things to keep that sewer system working. That is a big concern. We're working with LA County Public Works. They're part of all the discussions about the sewer system in the Seaview neighborhood and making sure that LA County sticks committed to make sure that that sewer system, they're spending, everyone's spending a lot of money, but we need to keep that up and running. If the power goes out in the, in the beach club area, there are all pumps there that pump that water up there. All of that, we're, we're, we're fully aware of that. And so, um, we can't put septic, possibly holding tanks. I need to work with LA County Health Department on that. So I know there's a there was a question here. Yes. You're a real estate question. Uh neighbors around the corner from us have a wonderful, perfect house that is in perfect condition and it's sold for several million dollars last week. And they turned off the gas and the sale fell through. So there's your, there's the value of your house. You wanna know what's gonna cost. It's costing you the value of your house that you saved for and paid off for your whole life and you retired and now you can't get rid of it. Okay. I. I know it's 9.15 and there are a couple of things I want to, I want to just say for the, 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 the viewing audience on Zoom, I, I see all the questions. If I didn't answer these questions, I will try to get a written response to, but a lot of it is redundant, similar questions. Um, someone asked if we're still watering uh, here at the, the field. Yes, we are. Um, Ladera Linda is not in the landslide zone and, and the water does not contribute to the landslide at all. We are still watering, but I'll, I'll get to some of these questions later offline. We'll try to do some written responses. I asked you a question. Um, what would you, if we did a resource center here in this building for a few days, what information not, and I know there's, there's, um, there's an interest in bringing contractors and getting the group uh, discounts and stuff like that. And I'll work with um, the uh, community association to try to help us with that. From a, from the government, the city, the county, the state, the feds, could, could you tell me what you would like in terms of resources? Um, I see a couple of hands. You first in, in orange and please, yeah. We're going to do propane, and I live it on 57 Narcissa, and um, we just would like to know, do we need permits? Because we were yes. told by the contractor, no, we yes. don't if it's a residential. You need permits. And we would like to see online if you would give us how many feet away, if you would give us all that information so we don't have to come down or rely on a contractor who might not be giving us the correct information. Please. Call. Okay. We have to call. call. Could you make it available we on can, a website? But you need a permit, and you can get permits um, electronically. We have that capability. 
but call the building department, ask the questions so they can specific to what you're doing so that we can tell you, but yes, you do need a permit for the propane and you need a permit to make the connections and the pipes need to go underground, not above ground. Correct, but we're also going to need that information. Well, I'm glad of that, but I'll follow up because now I know it does need a permit. Thank yes. you very much. Um, do we also will need information on generators. We're going to need information on mm -hmm. how to hook up to a sewage system if our sewage systems fail. We are going to need all of this, and it would be really nice if we didn't have to, if it was in one place. Yes, and we are, I, I hope in the next 24, 48 hours, by the next end of the week, we have drafts. It's going through the review. We'll, we'll post all that information on, and we'll let the community know where you, once it's all available, we're working on that information. So I'm asking, these are, uh, this is what, I, what I'm asking for is what resources do you need so I can pull that together for this room. So, uh, Sherry. When you get the FEMA individual assistance that you're that you're applying for, how do how do we apply for that? Any place we can apply for assistance, give us a list of that. Uh, look, you'll be the first to know, uh, but I'm going to be very honest. I was we're, we sent the letter today to Cal OES and FEMA for individual assistance. It's it has not been deployed. It's not it's not going to. It's going to take a long time till we get our, even an answer to our letter. FEMA, in, for the disaster that was declared, did not deploy individual assistance. So it's not even available. The letter is asking them to please reconsider that. Yes, I, we, in terms of financial, okay, we're, we're trying to put that together. Um, Nikki? Thank you. So in terms of the assistance that Sherry was talking about, it would be great if also we can ask and bring our elected officials from county, state, federal into this and have them ask too. So we need all hands on deck and support from them. If they don't believe what you or Mayor Krupshank are saying, have another town hall. We'll be happy to communicate that with them because in order for us to go and buy generators, whatever we need to do in order to uh, fix our homes, whatnot. We need that assistance and we need their push and support beyond just the city trying to do that. And, and I will tell you all branches were at our meeting on Monday and I said it numerous times. They, they were at, they, the CPUC was at the meeting and we are in communications with them and they are uh, bringing themselves up to speed on what's happening. So, Rainy, and, and again, the, I need to know what resource. Let me let me let me restate this question. LA County and the city wants to set up uh, a resource center in this room for a couple days. We want to know what information you need us to present at that that um, resource center. So that we're, we're, we know that we're getting you the information you want. We don't want to bring in saying, oh, how do you change your driver's license types of stuff. We want to get what you need. And I know individual assistance. What I heard from Kathy Gardner is she wants information on how to get permits and, and how to do all the different, to be off the grid, what you need. Uh, uh, sure, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, Ray, oh you got no. the mic. I was looking. Yeah, I got the mic. Um, oh, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. You need a resource for seniors. And I don't mean on the net, because many of them don't even have a computer. So you've got to have something, some kind of a resource to help seniors in, in our com community navigate this really difficult right. and, and situation. The, yes, and that, that came up. There's the Department of Aging, and yes, we... We we're aware, and they've been they've been contacted. Sure. Hi, uh, Hi, Sandy Valeri. San, Sandy, I'm That's sorry. Fine, I haven't talked to you for a while, Ara. But um, the one of one of the things I was thinking would be helpful at this resource meeting would be if you could maybe have a desk for people to process maybe over the counter permits. If you actually okay. had permit people here, so people could come in and maybe have a one stop shop. Right. 
Great suggestion. Okay, that, that would be one thing. And another thing is for people who might have to relocate for whatever reason, if you had uh, ideas or assistance, you know, you know, resources for relocation. And for those of us, like I have had two horses boarded in Portuguese bin for, for over 15 years, and I'm far from the only one. And if there's something happens and we can no longer keep our horses there, where could we possibly keep horses? So that would be something else that you could maybe add to the list about where horse facilities could be moved to. Great suggestion. Thank you, Sandy. Um, if you want to just pass the mic around to some of your neighbors. Sir, come on up and we'll ask, we'll get your question. Well, uh, one, one resource that might help. Uh, Speak up to the mic. Right, one resource that might help. Uh, I know there's difficulty over the internet and that kind of thing, but if the city could set up a web page where you just put in your cell phone number, where you could be kind of a one-stop shop where if any given utility informs you, we have to shut off water, power, gas, whatever, you can alert us straight away. And uh, that way it's alerts us specifically for this area, for this, for this problem, so. so. So there's a couple means of how we will communicate to the public, um, similar to what happened on uh, Monday or when we got word about SoCal gas, if you subscribe to the city's listserv, the land movement, we will push that out via email. If you sub the city has an app, the My RPV app, we will push information out on that as well. So, so we we get the information from the utilities as soon as we do. We they push it out to their uh, subscribers. We do the same thing. Please subscribe to our. Um, our uh, list search. I know Tim has the mic. We, we, we can do email, yes. And we we um, we reach out to the community associated, the neighborhoods, the HOAs, and they have distribution lists. They know who to talk to. And by the way, don't forget, I asked if, if you would send me information of those residents who are seniors or, or those with disabilities so we can create a database so that the fire department has that information the city does as well. Um, I think Tim, you had, yeah. All right, just uh, for everybody here, just be careful what we ask for. We're, we're, we're going to get gas and go propane and get off their system. Now we let Cal, SoCal gas off the hook. People are going out now to get generators. We're going to let Southern California Edison get off the hook. So we're all taken care of and then they walk away. Well, no, you can't yeah. have generators. I mean, not that many in this neighborhood. It's not going to work. I'm just saying, be careful. Right. These people right. should not be let off the hook. Right. Well, I just, just. We, we, we do have franchise agreements with these utilities and we need to make sure we do have franchise agreements with these utilities. We need to make sure that those are um, being upheld. And my understanding is none of the utilities are being pulled out um, so that the utilities are there so that they could be reinstated. But that is a very good point. Um, uh, any other resources? Yeah, I just have something that the community is going to need help with, with the propane. Uh, you, you cannot get a propane company to come out and deliver unless you've already retrofitted the entire uh, appliances. Okay, that's what they've told me. Like Amerigas or... Those yeah, companies. right. Okay. So the, the point being is that people need help in terms of even the size of the propane tank they're going to be getting, because if you get over a certain size, they can only bring in the huge trucks to refill you. And you're telling that you might be closing the road off to large trucks. So there's a lot of things here. There's a lot of miscellaneous things that people really need to understand before they can move forward. And so it'd be very helpful if uh, you could kind of sort through all those and, and even when you go down to get a permit, you may have to have already re re retrofitted your house before you can even get the tanks and even know what tanks you can get. No, that's a good point. And we are, we don't want trucks. Um, so that we'll have to figure out how they get in through a different way. Okay. Okay, Selena, Selena has to go. We're, we're at the end. And this is just, thank you, Selena. And Ben, if you want to leave, you can. Again, resources, yes. Well, we'll we're going to wrap it up in two minutes, two, three minutes. Something that could be very helpful. Uh, Please, you guys, I can't hear. I, I, I'm i trying to take notes. Something that would be very helpful is knowing how to get rebates 
uh, federal and state rebates on uh, appliances that we'll be buying. And uh, I was trying to follow a link to something and I realized what I had ended up in was some commercial site and as opposed to the government. So there are a lot of rebates out there, folks, for uh, switching up. Okay, thank you. I'll show you. Okay, this will be the last one. If anyone has, you could always email me. Um, actually, that gentleman over yeah, there. Yeah, well, yeah, he's doing my it. time to him if needed because he's had his hand up no, for a we'll long take, time. We'll <laughs> okay, so you wanted some resources. Um, and if you have a long list, you can always just email it to me. <laughs> um, so I know I've been fielding a lot of calls in my community for help with the SBA application, and I don't have a freaking clue. Um, it's really difficult. It's closed. So, yeah, no, the application time is closed. However, there's been a very helpful uh, group on Facebook giving tips on how to deal with it. If you got your application in on time, there's still many, many steps along the way. So for people who got their application in, it would be helpful to have somebody here okay. to um, help people with that. And along those lines, um, there've been questions about property taxes. So if somebody could come from the assessor's office for that, that would be great. Um, you know, if people make improvements to their house, is it gonna affect values, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then your basic relocation services, uh, movers, storage, people to help uh, people clear out stuff out of their homes if they want. Many of us have been in our homes for multiple generations. Um, and then the various different contractors, um, engineers, foundation experts, those, those kind of people to help us, especially because when a lot of us have reached out, especially a geotext that we've been told, oh, we're not doing anything in your community anymore. We don't want anything to do with it. So, um, and then the last thing is a lot of us don't have cell service in our areas. See you a little bit less, but Upper Portuguese Bend and PBC, we have really poor cell service. And so we switched to Wi-Fi, thinking great. And then we only have cell phones. We got rid of our landlines. I don't know if there's a way maybe to bring landlines back into the community or not, because we're talking about people accessing information on the internet or calls um, in emergency situation. And if we don't have cell service and we don't have Wi-Fi service, uh, we're kind of screwed. Do you, do you have Frontier? I think uh, Frontier. I now have Frontier. Most people have Cox in our neighborhood, but uh, it- I think they, pro they provide uh, landline services. Well, that but that- information yeah. would be very helpful okay. because there are many of us who have either poor cell service or have switched over to wi-fi service where without power okay to that no thank you okay sir um regarding items that you might bring into the resource center perhaps a uh, pre-approved system designs so we wouldn't have to pay for a design, have that approved by the city. For solar, right? Or just well, for actually, for any any utility that might apply, I don't know if there's other options, but I was thinking in particular solar. And then one more, uh, there's also solar water heating. That's not, it's directly from the sun. Maybe uh, look into that. Okay. All right. Um, thank you for those of you who decided to stick through the end. Um, what we will do is probably call for another uh, Q&A meeting like this um, in the next several weeks as more information comes. But stay tuned. We'll get you information on um, the Resource Center. Perhaps next week we'll have that set up for you. And we'll continue to get information out to the community. Thank you. Um, stay safe. Stay well. And good night.